Good evening, Cupcakes. It is a beautiful day here in Paldea. I hope your day is going wonderfully. So today, we are going to be trading away 100 Quaxleys. Actually, we're going to be trading away 103 Quaxleys, but that's, you know, details. So, I'm trying to get a thing started called Quax It Forward, where basically, um, we're sending out you know, I'm sending out Quaxley's nicknamed. Let me show you. Nick's nicknamed Quax It Forward. Obviously, Quax It Forward is 13 characters, so I can't really do. We can't spell out the forward, so we gotta do the. Anyway. Um, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, they're called Quax It Forward. Um, I'm asking anyone who gets them to, like, maybe tr to try breeding a few of them. It's not hard. All you need to do, you just need to get a Quaxley, get a Ditto, put them in your party, start a picnic, walk away, make some lunch, come back. There'll be 10 eggs in the basket. You can hatch those really easily. Just have a flame body Pokemon in your party. Fletchinder is really easy to get, and it's a good Pokemon to have. Just have it in your party. You can hatch five days at a time incredibly quickly. You can go around doing raids while you do it, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not hard, is the point. So um, so that's that's what I'm asking, is for people to, uh, to quax it forward, basically. Hold on. Sorry about that. Microphone was drip was uh, dipping. Anyway, so yeah, a hundred of these are going to be given out um, in the trade codes, the the zero 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 one zero 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 seven, etc. Trade codes. Um, I'm gonna do twenty five in each of those. So twenty five in zero 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 one zero 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 seven, twenty five in zero 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 four zero 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 seven, and then the reverses of the of each of those, and. Uh, um, and then three of them, I'm just going to wonder trade away. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's get started, shall we? First, we got to actually go online. And we're also going to be trying to solo a six-star raid. Um, this stream. Uh, using a interesting stat. A strat? Oh, that's right. To this that we do. With Dweet. Yeah, um, so I bred like 155 or so, and I already gave away uh, 50 something. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully, you guys will have an easier time uh, finding Quaxleys in the future. Now, something that happened when I was giving away some of them, some of them just like, some people just dropped. Because they saw that I already had the Sprigatito or the or the Fui Coco. Don't do that. Don't do that because there are people like me who are giving away Quaxleys. Who are breeding them up and giving them away. If you do that, you're gonna it's it's gonna be a lot worse for you. In terms of uh, um getting your Quaxley. And in case you're wondering, out of the 150 or so, 150 plus um, Quaxleys, I got, n as near as I can tell, none of them are shiny. I know Quax the shiny Quaxley looks similar. I didn't see any sparkles. They looked the same. I mean, I wasn't fully paying attention a lot of the time, but pretty sure none of them are shiny. But if they are, oh well. Anyway. It did take a long time to give away those those 50 though 36 of them took about an hour so hopefully this will go a lot faster we'll see so as you can see each box each box of my quaxleys is 25 because I have 25 for each of the trade codes. Once I'm done with the box, then I'll know to move on to the next trade code. 
Uh, so we're gonna do the first two. 0001, 0007, um, and then 0004, 0007. Um, and then I'm gonna try to do the whole thing with, uh, um, with the soloing of a six star raid. Good care of Sprigatito. And then, um, and then we're gonna go back to doing the, the Quaxley giveaway. And you're going to see how bad it is out there for people looking for Quaxleys, because I am almost certain that we are... That we are not going to... Look, this person does not have a Quaxley. Um, we're not going to find people... We're not going to be finding people looking to get a Sprigatito for their Quaxley, or get a, get a Fui Coco for their Quaxley. It's it's rough out there. That's, that's why I'm doing the Quaxit Forward thing. Hey, Cinders. How goes the day? Are you here to get a Quaxley? Take good care of Sprigatito. I won't. I'm probably just going to release it. I appreciate you. It took me hours to get my first Quaxley. And I tell people, you know, the number one tip, uh, starting out, Scarlet and Violet, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't started out yet, is to start with Quaxley. Because, my goodness, nobody wants to start with Quaxley. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so much easier filling out the Pokedex, if you start with a Quaxley. It's rough out there. It is rough out there. For for those of us that did not start with Quaxley, so I'm gonna try and, and the thing is, like, there's no way that I could give out enough Quaxleys for everyone. Which is, you know, part of the whole Quax it forward thing, hopefully. But I think it, it's gonna be a problem. It's it's gonna continue to be a problem. Come on. But yeah, if you could nick nickname any Quaxleys you give away, Quax it forward. Um, maybe, maybe some somebody will get the reference. I know I'm old. I know I'm old, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people still get the reference of pay it forward. Get that concept. buying the Starbucks drink for the person behind you who then buys the person behind them's drink who then buys the person behind them's drink and so on and so forth in a multi-hour chain There's a song. There is a song that I heard that I heard as a kid. It's and I have not heard it again. I saw them it was like late night, you know, I was watching I don't know, maybe CMT. Um and it was this song that came on. And this guy, he was talking about how um as a kid, you know, his parents driving down a country road, they got a flat tire, um dad's out in the rain trying to change it. And this dude, in a truck, he just, he just, and this guy's offering a fui coco in the, in the Sprigatito for Quaxley trade, but I don't care. It happens. Um. And so this guy in a truck, with this, um, with his anchor tattoo, he remembers the anchor tattoo. He stops, 
and he helps him change the uh, um that um uh, that's a good one as well anyway um <laughs> so he stops and he helps the, the guy change his tire and he's like hey what do i owe you and he's like you'll repay the debt someday and then you know he gets older and he uh, um and he's driving down the road and uh, he sees this guy in the rain trying to change his tire um, and he's gonna just drive on, but then he remembers that guy, and he helps him change his tire, and then he sees anchor tattoo. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> whoops. Um, and he's, and he's like, and, and the guy with the anchor tattoo, he's like, hey, what do I owe you? And he's like, um, um, it's just a debt repaid. I'm just repaying a debt, something like that. And I've never been able to find that song. I've looked up lyrics, I've looked up everything, I cannot find it. I was actually watching a bunch of Pete and Pete episodes the other day, and uh, um, and there was actually uh, an episode where Pete uh, he hears this garage band uh, s playing this song, and it's like he he loves it. It's the it's like the best song he's ever heard. And normally, you know, he's not little Pete is not really into music. He's like, ah, oh, it's a waste of time. But the song it's, it it like speaks to him. And you know he he goes on this on this campaign trying to find the song. He starts his own radio station, trying to find the song because it's Little Pete. Of course, he started a radio station. Um, um, but he never finds it, and he ends up uh, starting a garage band just so that he can he can keep the memory of the song alive, so that he, he doesn't forget it, so that he can play it himself. Naturally, it was a song by Polaris, who sang the uh, the opening theme song for Pete and Pete. But yeah, no, it's it's kind of like that, except I'm not Little Pete, so I'm not starting a radio station trying to find this song. But I did start streaming. That's the entire goal of this channel, by the way, is to try and find somebody who knows what that song is and, and who can share it with me. <laughs> the deep lore. <laughs> the deep lore of this channel. This is a different song for the record that I'm humming. <laughs> you can think about the woman or the girl you knew before. Say, here I am on the road again. Here I go up on stage. Say here I am Playing the star again Here I go Turn the peak Sometimes you can't hear them talk other times you can It's those same old cliches Is it a woman or a man? You always feel outnumbered You don't dare make a stand Say here I am On the road again Here I go up on stage, here I am, playing the star again, here I go, turn the page. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's also a, uh, um, a deficit in terms of uh, Scarlet exclusives versus violet exclusives because i do know that pokemon violet is more popular than pokemon scarlet so it's entirely possible that it's a lot easier to find 
you know, when you go into those trade codes uh, for Scarlet exclusives versus Violet exclusives, it's a lot easier to find the uh, um, if you're on, you know, if you're on Scarlet than if you're on Violet. Um, that may not be the case for Fluttermane or for Iron Hands, just because Fluttermane, uh, well, I mean, I don't think people are putting up their shiny Fluttermanes in those. Although I could do that. Actually, I think I should do that. Because um, if you don't know, there's actually a trick um, where you can get three or four. Oh, the guy said he got six one time. But anyway, like three to six a shiny Fluttermanes in a half an hour. And, you know, with the, with the sandwich. Um, really, really easily. So... So I think I might at some point do um, some shiny Fluttermane giveaways too, um, just because those are really easy. But you know, Iron Hands, of course, um, is one of the Pokemon that's used to um, solo six-star rates. There's Iron Hands, um, there's Azumarill, and then there's two different builds for Golden Go. There's the Hex build and the Steel Beam build. Uh, today, we should probably do the Azumarill one probably do the Azumarill one, but I'm not going to do the Azumarill one. I'm going to be doing the, uh, um, I'm going to try and do the Iron Hands one, which means that I need to look up the trade codes. And, uh, um, let's see. Um, I also need to make sure, I mean, I've got Drain Punch. I don't know if you need to get the TM for close combat or if, uh, Iron Hands learns that himself. Wild Charge is not going to be useful because my uh, six-star raid for today is ground, so it really doesn't matter what electric move it has. Hopefully it's not a ground-type Pokemon. Because the ground-type po po Pokemon uh, with ground Terra-typing uses an Earthquake or Earth Power on us. That's not going to be good. And I should, I should have definitely gone for... Uh, um, for the Azumarill strategy then, but anyway, that's aside from the point. So this is going pretty smoothly. It seems that most people have learned to uh, not just back out of a trade as soon as they don't see the white background on their um, on their thing. So yeah, if you saw, by the way, the white background on the first Quaxley in the box, um, that means that they didn't that they don't have that Pokemon. So hold on. Sorry, I didn't know if the microphone was going to be picking up some background noise there. Um, but I might get banned on YouTube for doing Anyway, so, yeah, so that white background, it means that the other person does not have that Pokemon. And what a lot of people were doing is that they were going into these trade codes, and if they, and if they didn't see the white background on the Pokemon that they were trading away, then they just back out of them. And so I had a lot of people, you know, I'm giving away these Quaxleys, I go into these trade codes, and they're just like, oh, well, he... He already has a Sprigatito. He already has a Fui Coco. So clearly he's not, you know, clearly he's looking for a Quaxley. No, I'm trying to give them away. Um, yeah, so don't do that. Don't do that. Um, because right now, most 
probably most of the Quaxleys that you're going to be getting are from people that already have Sprigatitos and Fui Cocos. Fui Cocos. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Um, no matter what I do. Um... Um, yeah, and they're not, they're not going to be people who just, you know, have these Pokemon naturally. You know, they're, they're going to be, that, that started out with a Quaxley and they're looking to fill out their Pokedex. Most of the trades, um, from, you know, that you're going to be getting for Quaxley are people who are like, oh, wow, it was really difficult to find a Quaxley. I'm going to have to be giving away. Yeah, see, here, this guy, he doesn't have a Quaxley. He quit the trading. So this is, this is what I'm saying. Don't do that. Because this Cowco Gator just lost out on a Quaxley. And he's going to have a really hard time finding it because, like I said, not a lot of people actually started with Quaxley. Most people who um, who are in these trades are people who uh, are giving away Quaxleys. They already have their Fue Cocos, they already have their Sprigatitos, so you're not going to see a white background. You're just going to have to go in and, you know, it, it'll take longer... For each trade, but for each trade attempt, but you're not gonna be skipping out, you know, on seven or eight Quaxleys before you actually get yours. Now, I do want to point out that one of my goals for this game is to get a living dex, so I'm gonna have. Three Quaxleys to myself. But I think giving away 150 Quaxleys into these trades. I think that's fair. Felori. Is that like. Is that like the German version of Kitty? Because I see a lot of nicknames like that. Uh, I've seen, like, three Felores at this point for Sprigatito from German players. Speaking of, my goodness, it is so much easier uh, to <laughs> to get foreign Sprigatitos and uh, Fui Cocos than it is to get a foreign Ditto. I'll tell you. That's the second Fui Coco in these... And the Sprigatito for Quaxleys, which I, I think there's a lot more demand for, you know, uh, for Sprigatitos than there is for Fue Cocos. Um, seems like, I don't know, 60% of people started with Fue Coco, 30% with Sprigatito, and like 10% with Quaxley. So, um, I might have to... You know, try and focus down the uh, Fui Coco trades a bit more in the future. Um, but we'll see. I mean, listen. You know, Sprigatito lovers like myself, th they need their their Quaxleys too. Okay. Alright, so we're 60% of the way done. Actually. What? They did not cancel the trade. Hey, Wi Fi Rat, are you okay? Internet, you okay? My internet seems to be okay. Maybe my Wi Fi router. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> has got to be a little. Can you imagine that? Oh, come on. Come on. You can do it. Maybe it was his internet. Okay, good. I've had some people do that. Um, so that happen. People disconnect as I'm as I'm tr trying to trade my Quaxleys to them. Man, that's gonna suck. That has got to suck. Don't don't go searching for Quaxleys on spotty Wi-Fi, okay? That's actually, so, um, the thing that I was talking about with, like, Scarlet versus Violet, that's probably gonna be a problem as far as, like, 
Coridon and Maridon goes, and there's really no easy solution for that. Not unless speedrunners start to do that, um, to uh, trade away their their guys after it ends, because. Because that's the thing. My understanding is I think uh, Quaxley actually might be the best for speedrunning. Meow Scarada is good, but um, but Quaxley is better for speedrunning. So it might be that, you know, at the end of it, they're like, okay, well, um, uh, well, because, you know, short on Quaxley's, short on Coridon's, it might be that they'll that it, it'll become, like, tradition for speedrunners to to give away their starter and to, to give away their their extra Coridon. Because, yes, there, there is actually an extra Coridon. In case you didn't know, you can catch the, the other one. The one that you have to fight against. Um, I have not done that yet. I probably should at some point. Yeah, we're, um, 66% of the way done with, um, with this trade code, this link code. Yeah, um, I don't know. That'd be a good idea. To, uh, for speedrunners to do that. Maybe I'll start speedrunning uh, Scarlet and uh, and do that. Not on this account. This account, I'm not giving up this safe. Gotcha. That's also another one I've seen. Uh, yeah, yeah, from the French, which I think just means kitty. It's like it's it's like their version of kitty, where it's like, oh yeah, every single cat. You know, there's like a there's a forty percent chance that it's named kitty. bothers me about the whole Jojo cat thing is that you've seen you've seen Quaxley's final evolution, right? Let's see, it's Quaxley, Quaxwell, and then something Quax? I forget. Um let's see, wait, hold. Hachimas. What? Hachimas? Hachimas. Okay, well, anyway. Um So um, the thing is, so it's a water fighting type. You saw it, Nimona used it at the end of the, the, the thing. Anyway, it's a fighting water type that, uh, um, it has these rings that are coming out of it. And these rings, you could interpret those rings as its stand. So, it's kind of accurate to call it. Jojo Duck. Not to mention, I mean, the rings, you know, spiral, spiral energy. The original. Not, wait, no. Which one was it? No, spiral energy, hold on, was spiral energy from part 7 onward? Ripple, yeah. So spiral energy was part 7 onward. Uh, ripple, the ripple was, was the original. But yeah, no, it's it's kind of like, you know, ripple energy slash stands, which, um, 
my understanding is that the two were supposed to actually be somewhat connected originally. Um, ripple energy and stands like a, the stand was kind of like the evolution of ripple energy. Well, we are 80% of the way done, and we're a half an hour in. Well, 80% of the way done with this with this link code. Um, and we're a half an hour in. So, making good progress, I'd say. It also doesn't have Fui Coco, but that's going to be a lot easier than, uh, than trying to hunt down uh, Quaxley. Okay, so that's the second time, and you can see that that white flashing background was there. So he didn't have a Quaxley, but uh, he thought that I didn't have a Quaxley for him. So don't do that. Do not assume that it's a bad trade. Otherwise, it's not. You're going to have a bad time trying to find Quaxley. You'll be able to get through more trades per hour in terms of, like, searching for trades, um, but you're not... It, it's not a good idea, just because you're going to be giving up on a lot of good trades. You know, it's it's not worth it to skip over, like, the seven or eight that, uh, um, Quaxley giveaway trades. Um, just for that extra speed. Because I'm telling you, right now, I mean, how many... Let, let me ask you, we, we've, done, we've done this, this is, hold on, this is the 24th trade that we've gone into, right? How many, how many were Quaxley's look, looking for Sprigatitos? After 24 trades, zero. Zero! That's how rare it is. You're, it, so this is the thing, you're, you're, like I said, the vast majority of Quaxley trades are going to be from Quaxley giveaways, which is why it, there's the whole Quax it forward thing. This is the 25th one. Zero out of 25. So yeah, if you, if you go for the white background strategy, you're just screwing yourself over. Now that said, so this is the trade. These are the trade codes. Um, the the zero 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 one zero 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 seven. Those are the ones for looking for Quaxley. Um, these people. Um, these are the people that just you know started out, that they haven't had you know they haven't gotten through like ten or twenty bad trades. Um. You kind of real you, you kind of realize when you're doing this that the only way to actually get a Quaxley is to go for the 0007, 0001, or 004. Because none of the Quaxley players, none of the people trading away their Quaxleys, are having any trouble finding um, somebody, you know, the Sprigatitos and the, and the Fue Cocos. So... And that's the thing, is that when you, you know, you go to the, like, oh, I'm, I have a Sprigatito, I'm looking for a Quaxley, that's the 00010007 trade, right? None of, you know, those people, they're in there, like, 
desperately searching, some of them switch over to the 007 first. Because that's where all the people with the Quaxleys are, who who are who have the Quaxleys and they're just they're looking to fill out their Pokedex with a Sprigatito and a Fue Coco. Because they're not they're not desperate enough to try and switch to try and reverse it. So yeah, we're not going to find any uh, um, any Quaxley players with this. We're, we would only be finding people giving away Quaxleys. Yeah, 25 um, in 36 minutes, so... I mean, honestly, this is probably the hardest part of giving away Quaxleys. The breeding, super easy. Not even a problem. The hatching, not much of an issue. Um, especially if you're going around doing other things like fighting raids, that sort of thing. Um, because you're not really like, oh, I need to hatch these. It's just, you know, hey, you go around, you fight raids. Oh, hey, it hatched. Nice. Um... So it's it's this it's this part of it that is that is the the most time consuming part is the actually giving them away. All right, so let's change this to the Fue Coco looking for looking for this. I might need to start mass breeding Sprigatitos as well, but we'll see. Wait, did we? Because there's no white background. So this person has had a Fue Coco before. Or not a Fue Coco, a Quaxley before. What? Why are you trading for more, Fu uh, more Quaxleys? I don't even understand the world anymore. To Aaron. Anyway, and yeah, and then so after this, we're gonna, you know, go on the quest to try and solo um, the six star raid. So after this box. Um, after this trade code, this box, um, we're going to be uh, um, we're going to be trying to uh, get the brute bonnet, trade it for an iron hands, um, do all the stuff we need. Um, so get the bottle caps. We I think I have like three or four because I've been doing like just a ton. Uh, I've been soloing a ton of raids. Which by the way, so. You may, you may remember the end of the last stream, we hadn't unlocked the six-star raids yet. I found out between that stream and this stream that uh, it's not just five-star raids that get you points towards unlocking six-star raids. It's any raids. Any any terror raids that you do. Because um, I did, like, I think it was a three-star raid that I did. And uh, and then I got a call from Shaq. And it was like, oh yeah, by the way, you've unlocked six-star raids. Don't, don't try and fight them, though. I'm going to try and fight him. Um, yeah, so that's why I think it might be a little difficult, because a lot of people are trying to find Iron Hands to solo six-star raids. Um, but yeah, no, I've got, I've got like three bottle caps. I've got 830,000 Poke Yen, so we're not going to have any trouble affording the mints and uh, the vitamins to get it up to, to max EVs. Oh, um, and... We're not going to have any trouble affording the rest of the bottle caps. Well, the, not the mints. The mints 
the mint to get it to the right nature, and uh, bottle caps to get it to the right IVs, the and the uh, um, vitamins to get it to the right EVs. We're not going to have any trouble with any of that. Um, the only trouble we might have is the moveset. I'm, and I know I have Drain Punch. I don't know if I have Belly Drum. I don't know if I have um, Close Combat. And I don't know if I have Wild Charge. And I don't know if it needs to learn those from ATM. Or if it can just learn those from, you know, normal, from level up. I don't even care. I don't even care if they offer me like a slow poke for the Quaxley. I don't care. It's all good. You can do whatever they want. Oh, by the way, you remember the stakes that I was confused about um, a couple of streams ago? It's actually eight stakes for four different Pokemon, not four stakes. So I pulled out four of the stakes, but there's still four more to go uh, for up in the northwest. Actually, I think I pulled out one more. I don't know, maybe we'll do a history lesson when we... Uh, um uh, the set of history lessons in order to uh, to unlock the 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 fast travel to the gates. That's that's something I, I was noticing while I was uh, doing some terror raid ends, um today and yesterday is that uh, there's a lot of places that don't have any fast travel points except for those gates. Those gates are, uh, pretty good. Pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, as far as, as far as fast travel points. Um, and I believe you actually do need to, to take the, the lessons in order to catch the Pokemon that come out of there. So yeah, there's, I don't know, people keep calling them sub-legendaries, and I don't know why. Because, as near as I can tell, they are legendary Pokemon. They act... Just like leg legendary Pokemon, um, um, but that's that's actually another thing, by the way, that I really like about these games is because there's been like this ever since um, Gen three. There's been this massive increase in the number of legendary Pokemon. So in the uh, um, in the first game, there were four legendary Pokemon, right? In the second, there were five. Keep in mind, Mew, Celebi don't count; those are mythical Pokemon. In the third game, there were a lot more. In the third third generation, uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. There were like, what, seven, eight, something like that? 
Um, and then in in the fourth gen, there were like twelve, and there's been like a ridiculous amount every single generation. Um, Sword and Shield. I can only think of three actually in Sword of Sword and Shield. I mean, yes, there were the uh, the uh, Galarian forms for the original three legendary birds. You can count those um, if you want. Oh, oh, there was the the panda Urshifu. Um, that one counts, I guess, as a legendary. Um, that doesn't seem very legendary. Um, but yeah, in this game. Uh, there's one legendary Pokemon, per, well, one legendary Pokemon per game, Coridon or Maridon. And then there's these four sub-legendaries, which seems like they should just be called legendaries. I don't know. If someone wants to explain to me why they're sub-legendary, I'd be more than happy to hear it. Um, but yeah, and, uh, um, and so it's that... Keep in mind, we're not talking about pseudo legendaries, um, which are you know with like the back like Backscalibur, um, Tyranitar, Salamence, those. Which that's another thing. Gen three added two pseudo legendary lines. Like, come on, man. Um, but yeah, we're not talking about, like, pseudo-legendaries, we're talking about sub-legendaries. So, yeah, um, that would be a total of, of six. Which is definitely better. I, I don't like this mass, these massive amounts of legendaries and mythicals that have been introduced in every single generation. It's, it's kind of gotten a little ridiculous. And so the fact that there's a lot fewer, um, I like. I mean, you could even argue that Coridon and Maridon are not actually legendary for a couple reasons. First of all, because you can get two per save file, um, and second of all, because they aren't really unique. They're just um, very—they're just limited paradox Pokemon. But you could—you could—you could argue that. Yeah, that's probably why. Let each legendary and each mythical. Did you know that the GS ball that Ash got in, in the anime was actually supposed to have Celebi in it? But then they decided to make the Celebi movie, and um, and they were just like, well, there's no purpose to this now, so... Oh well. <laughs> and it's just... It was this... It was major, you know, plot point, this major MacGuffin, and it just led to nothing. Rachi, Deoxys. There were some other um, mythical Pokemon in number three. What was? I really think that there should be a special class of mythical for like the Mew type mythicals, which uh, um, you know, of course, the first two generations that was the only type of mythical we had because it was one per generation. And then uh, um, in the third generation, it was Jirachi. In the fourth generation, it was Manaphy. Um, I don't remember what it would... It... No, wait, no, there were two, actually, in the fourth generation. There was Shaman and Manaphy. Because Shaman was also 100 per step. Wait, what? No, I didn't. No, I did not. No, I did not. Don't you lie to me. Don't you lie to me telling me that I canceled the trade. Um... So, yeah, Shaman in its... In its... Grisidia form, I think it's called. 
um, has uh, um, has 100 in each stat. It's 100 base stat for each. Um, I mean, you know that that's the thing. Like, I blame Generation Three for starting it, uh, for starting like the increase in the number of legendaries and mythical Pokemon. Um, but Generation Four is where it kicked into overdrive. I, I can't even deny that. And it also, like, <laughs> Generation 3 also kind of uh, was the start of legendary Pokemon being uh, not so legendary. Because, like, the Lake Trio, like, oh my god, the Lake Trio were bad. <laughs> Like, you look at all the legendary Pokemon, first gen and the second gen, um, you could see, like, yeah, these are these are Pokemon where... I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say with it, but it just... The Lake Trio didn't feel all that legendary to me. You know, like, I get that it was significant to the Sinnoh region, but they didn't really have many powers, and they didn't really have much much depth to them they were just okay they're the guardians of this one like which also kind of like kills it in terms of in terms of like why would they be anywhere else like yeah okay congratulations you have like guaranteed that there's only one of these pokemon and the same thing goes for um for palkia uh, Di dialga and giratina and arceus and it's like yeah okay there's there's clearly only one of of these pokemon ever but hold on a second. And I guess you could say the same about um, Rayquaza and Groudon and Kyogre. Is like that that was really like, okay, there's definitely only one of these. Whereas, you know, with the legendary birds, you'd say, well, maybe there's more of them. Um, including Lugia and, and ho -Oh. And even the legendary beasts. Whoops. Even the legendary beasts, you could say, well, you know, maybe there's more of them. Um... But as far as, uh, um, as far as, like, the Lake Trio, like, you could say, okay, maybe there's a reason why Dialga and Palkia are somewhere else, but with the Lake Trio, it's like, there's no real reason why they would be anywhere other than these lakes in Sinnoh. So, you've kind of screwed yourself if you want them in, you know, future Pokemon games. <laughs> Do you want them to be able to be caught in, in a Pokemon game that doesn't take place in Sinnoh? You know, by by tying their the the you know the the legend of them so closely with those lakes, it it did kind of do a disservice to that. Which I don't know. Maybe they maybe they retconned it later, where it's like, oh yeah, they're just lake guardians in general, and they can you know guard other lakes. I don't know. But just my thoughts on the matter. I guess you could argue that the same thing is true with Koraidon, Maraidon, um, and well, to a lesser extent, because, like, you could always add a time travel aspect. I mean, um, look at what Sun and Moon did. You had the... what was it called? You had, like, the portal thing, right, as part of the post-game. You could catch all sorts of different Pokémon. Um, they could do something similar with Koraidon and Maraidon, where it's like, oh yeah, it's the portal post-game, and... You know, one of the portals leads to the past, and one leads to the future, and uh, so you can catch the Paradox Pokemon, including Koraidon and Maridon, um, in it. But as far as the sub-legendary Pokemon, that... Because I do know that based on their... based on their... the, the legends, that they are very closely tied with the Palkia region. Or the Paldea region? Palkia region? <laughs> uh... Oh man, can you imagine? The Palkia region, that would definitely be too much water. Oh, that wouldn't be a 7 out of 10, that'd be a, a 6 out of 10 at best. Probably more like a 5 or a 4. Way too much water, man.
you know, truth be told, it would probably be better for me, um, instead of having trained up Pyro to level 100 for doing for these raids, if I had trained up a Fue Coco uh, for doing for doing uh, five star raids. Um, because Fui Coco, it, it's signature... So, you know how Meow Scarada has Flower Trick as its signature move? Always crits, which is... Oh boy. Uh, not as powerful as I was thinking it was, because, you know, Gen 1 player, so I forgot that they... They, uh, um, nerfed crits. But it's still very powerful, especially, uh, I was in a raid just today... And um, the the Terror Raid Pokemon uh, used Iron Defense, which, you know, if I wasn't using Flower Trick, might have screwed me hard. Um, because that's half damage from all of my attacks, except for crits. Like, that's the main thing about crits, is that they ignore um, your attack decreases, and they ignore the opponent's uh, defen defense buffs. And that is huge in these Terror Raids. Huge. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember what Quaxley's signature, um, signature move is, the the final evolutions, but Fui Coco's uh, final evolution, its, um, its signature move is um, an attack that does, it's a fire attack. That does actually a lot of damage. I think it's like base 70 power, base 70 or 80, somewhere. Like, so it's close to flame thrower, And it raises its special attack every time it's used. So after the first one, it becomes more powerful than flamethrower. That's after the first one. And because of the way these terror um, raid battles work, um, you're just, you're going to be doing that again and again and again. You, so you you can slap a, a choice specs on it and just use that and just use that move and it, it it's great although oh my gosh there's actually um, a raid up north a five star raid up north I can't do I cannot do um, because it has torment and um, and so I can't I can't use a choice band with my uh, with cookie on it against it and it just I don't know I could try you doing pyro doing it with pyro um but yeah I also ran into some Gengars with spite that was brutal especially since I was using pyro for those and pyro's armor so the armor blast it has pp5 which after three pp ups turns into eight so eight pp it takes away four with spite oh and did I mention it has cursed that Gengar has cursed body so that uh, when I attack it, sometimes my attack will be disabled. The attack that I use will be disabled. Just fantastic. So anyway, I slapped flame flamethrower on Pyro as well. So now instead of Will O Wisp, it has uh, it has both flamethrower and armor cannon, and um, that works a little bit better for that stuff. And what I can do is I can use flamethrower plan to faint. And then once I get sent back out, I can terrestrialize and use armor cannon. And that's uh, um, that's kind of the strategy that I used for those Gengar. And so I might try it against the. Uh... Oh yeah, by the way, it was a it was a King Gambit. For uh, um, that that's the one up north that I'm having trouble with. Oof, it's rough. It's rough. Oh yeah. Um, but. I mean, maybe I can just try using, uh, whatchamacallit, Iron Hands, when we get it all set up. So yeah, we are, we are, uh, close to an hour in, and we are, what, 66% of the way through this trade code, which... I mean, it would just be easier to say that we're 43% uh, of the way done with all the trades. I mean, other than the three trades that we're putting on Wonder Trades, but, you know, whatever.
one hour. So yeah, like I said, this is uh, this is kind of the most time-consuming part of it. Is uh, is the actual trading it away? But other than that, I mean, breeding is just ridiculously easy in these games. Uh, breeding Pokemon, both you know, the the picnic thing with the with where you get the eggs, that is so stupidly easy. You don't even need egg power. Like I said, you just you just start it with a Quaxley and a Ditto. Um, you go, you make yourself some lunch. And then you come back, and hey, you've got 10 eggs in the basket. That's it. That There there you go. You've got 10 Quaxley that you can go ahead and trade out. You can keep two for yourself for a living dex, um, so that you'll have three. And then you can just trade the other eight away. You know? In any combination of the link codes that you want to use. Or you can just wonder trade them. Um, which would probably be a lot faster, to be honest, is to, to wonder trade away those Quaxleys. Um, frankly, I don't care. As long as you're breeding the Quaxleys and you're giving them away, either through Wonder Trades or through Link Trades, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see with Quaxit forward. Um, let's see. What else was I going to say? <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, but yeah, no, the, the hatching, it's also really easy. I'm, I was really surprised how fast each of them hatched when I wasn't like, you know, hatching them in between terror raid battles, because naturally the terror raid battles were taking a very long time, and so... Well, they took a long time if they were five star. If they were three star, they were. <laughs> it's one attack. <laughs> one attack. Choice banded Meowscarada with fl with uh, flower trick. Oof. Oof. Just insta death. Almost done. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do this whole thing with the um, with the iron hands. I need to look up the trade codes. I need to. Um, you gotta get lucky with the code. Um, that's that's it. I'm just I'm putting them in the trade codes. Um, the so this the current one is zero 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 four zero 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 seven. If you're not familiar with those trade codes, um. It's the Austin John Plays ones. I'm almost done with this round of them. Um, so I was going to do 50, then take a break, try and do a do a solo six-star um, raid battle, and then do a... Um, and then do another 50. Um, and then do the three that I'll be putting in Wonder Trade. Yeah, no, I know. Trust me, I know. It took me a couple of hours to get mine, and uh, that was from a Sprigatito, which, by the way, I mean, that that's probably a tip, is that it'll pro it's probably easier to find it with a Sprigatito in the 0007-0001 trade code um, than it is for um, for a Fue Coco, especially if you're doing the uh, Quaxley code second, because these Quaxley um, players, they're not having a hard time finding Fuecocos and Sprigatitos. Um, so they're not reversing the code. So you need to reverse the code uh, for them. 
to, to find them. Because I can almost guarantee that we are the only purple person with Quaxleys in here. Now, something I've been noticing a lot of people doing, um, so don't do this, is the white background. You know, you'll see a flashing white background. Um, if you don't know, then if you haven't been doing it. But uh, that's that shows that they... Uh, that they don't have that Pokemon. What some people do is that they'll go into these trades if they don't see a flashing white background um, on their Fui Coco or on their Sprigatito, they'll just back out of the trade immediately. Don't do that! The vast majority of Quaxleys that you'll find in these trades are people doing stuff like this. People doing Quaxley giveaways. Um, and so, uh, so they'll already have the Sprigatitos, they'll already have the Fui Cocos, but that doesn't mean they don't have a Quaxley that they're trying to give you. Um, so it's, it'll take you a lot longer to find a Quaxley if you're backing out of trades just because they already have a Sprigatito or a Fui Coco. You know, on the other hand, you know, you talked about requesting one. Actually, so in the in the description, there should be a link to uh, to my Discord. Um, what you can do is you could put in like a trade code that you want to use, like just random digits, right? And um, I could give you one of the three extras that I have. So the three extras I was gonna do a. Uh, um, I was just going to put those in a wonder trade, but I could also just have them for people that want to request a Quaxley. If you're still here. I think I might try that next time if uh, if I get a lot of requests uh, from people on Twitter or in the comments of uh, of the stream after the fact, like oh I missed it, can I can I try that again? I might go ahead and, and be like okay, so next week I'll do is another stream and uh, um, and that way you know and I'll I'll go ahead and uh, be trading specifically to people who are requesting them first, and then I'll do some more that I give away. Looks like uh, looks like he's gone, so unfortunate. But anyway. wish I would have thought of that. All right, so that is the last one for this round. Now, uh. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Because I heard that there was actually a, uh, a thing. Mystery gift. Get via internet. Oh, check mystery gifts. Nothing was found. Check book portal news. You've connected to the internet and received the latest updates about what's going on in the Paldeo region. Maybe now. Get via internet. Searching for gifts. Flying terror type Pikachu. Ah, there we go. So yeah, you get a you get a flying terra type Pikachu. Unless, I don't know if it's got like any special moves or anything like that. But this is actually the first gift Pokemon I've received since uh, Mew. Going, I went to a uh, a thing where uh, um, where you could get a Mew, and uh, um, 
this little uh, Pokemon convention thing. Not really a convention, but um, I, I tested my team against a thing. This was back when it was a lot harder to get to level 100. You had to fight the Elite Four over and over and over and over again to, to grind your Pokemon up. I had forgotten to grind my uh, uh, Articuno up. It was level 89, and I had six rare candies, so I fed them all to it. And yes, I am. I was familiar with the uh, with the missing no item duplication glitch. I refused to use it. When it is angered, it immediately discharges the energy stored in its pouches in its cheeks. I think the entire reason for the flying terratype, by the way, being the balloons, is because of that. Is because of the whole, uh, um, the flying terratype Pikachu. Uh, because that was a thing. I think Pokemon Yellow. Uh, I don't know. Level 5, huh? Uh, you know what, actually, uh, let's check. Check somewhere. Fly. So it does have fly. Uh, Tail Whip. Thundershock and Quick Attack. Uh, Filianori, can I get a can I get a translator here? All right, so. I don't speak Spanish, uh, but Filionore does, so... Oh, uh, muy bien. Uh, gracias. I'm gonna move these over, because they're... Yeah, these guys are the ones seeing the least action in terms of battles, so... Need to level them up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna do. Wait, what? Why is there? Uh... Hold on. How did the did the date roll over? What? I am so confused. There was a there was a six star ground terra type right over here, and now it's gone, and now there's the six star fairy terra type over here. Uh. Okay, that's fine. That actually suits me, because I believe fighting is super effective against Fairy. Fighting in steel, right? Hola, como estas? Alright, so... I believe research station number three? We'll see. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a picnic. And should I do grass or dark? I think grass would probably be better. Uh, first of all, let me go ahead and change to sleeper. Don't know if... Actually, uh, are grass Pokemon immune to Spore? I think they are. I'm gonna try... I'm gonna do stun instead. Um, so... Okay. Uh, probably not best to host a picnic here. Oh, can we not do that? Can we not make a picnic in Area Zero? Ah, uh, yeah, that's that. You know what? That explains it a lot, actually. So let's go ahead and head out of here. Get my dolly, because we can get a pic get picnic going really quick out here. And we'll get encounter power grass.
Come on, come on. I really should redecorate at some point. So, counter encounter powder grass. Let me see. Ooh, I could get catching power. That would be. That would also be nice. Now you can't get level three on anything unless you add uh, Herba Mystica to it, and I am not about to do that. Humongo Power Grass. Humongo Power Grass. Can you please, can I just get an Encounter Power Grass, please? It's P Point Power, Encounter Power, Dark. It's tempting, but no. Teensy Power Grass. Teensy Power Grass. Teensy Power Grass. Raid Power Dark. Yeah, we could uh, um, do Raid Power Fighting when we, uh, when we go into those. Um, I wish you could, uh, you could search them for the effect. Counter Power Grass. There we go. Catching Power Fairy. No, not too worried about that. And we'll go ahead and... Smiling V. No, VV Peck. What that? E. Alright. Let's not screw this up. First, of course, we're going to start with the cloth sticks. Don't worry, we're not actually eating cloth. You know, they, they didn't die for this. No cloths or harm. This is from their shedding. Or something. Let's see. And then the lettuce. And somehow it just teleported below. That's fine. If you screw this up, you don't get as good of effects, by the way, so, uh, you, you definitely want to be careful about that. Now this one you can screw up. The top of the sandwich is actually not necessary. <laughs> oh no, please tell me that didn't cause it to fail. Alright, let's see what we get from that. Guess we shouldn't have started with the cloth sticks. So this fails. Hold on. I forgot you have to click past that. Uh, that seems like maybe it failed a little bit. No? Okay. Yeah, there's the there we go. Encounter power grass too. Cool. All right, pack of it go. Yes. Nice to level up your Pokemon in that. Anyway, so we fly here. Go in here. And then we should have a lot easier time finding brute bonnets now. 
I think they're in the cave. I think they're in the cave. So we come in here. We go into the cave. Eventually. Oh, nope, not in the cave. But see, yeah, you can you can see a lot easier to find the brute bonnets. So we'll uh, try a quick ball for it. Well, that was um, that was interesting. Apparently, I'm invisible. I think they're just immune to grass type uh, changes, so probably actually would have been better to bring uh, a blade with false swipe and uh, hypnosis or thunder wave, something like that. So we need more catchers than just our uh, than just these guys. Oh, okay, that was not great. It's fine. We don't need to worry about that. I'm almost positive that Spore isn't going to work here, so we'll just false swipe it down to, uh, to... You know, this is... this is gonna be a lot more painful if you just if you keep doing that okay man okay I think that's as low as it's gonna go and then we'll go ahead and pull out the ultra ball do not want to accidentally use the master ball here ah critical capture too okay It is possible that the creature listed as Brute Bonnet in a certain book could actually be this Pokemon. We'll call it... Bonnie. Alright. So let me go ahead and... Um, go ahead and swap it with uh, Spormon. Alright. So... Let me go ahead and look up the uh, the trade codes. Oh my gosh. I don't want to go to Polygon. <laughs> oh, I should probably be a bit more careful about this. Um. I can't use the Poke Portal now. Interesting. I'm gonna get a second one. They don't want to knock it out, which, if I use flamethrower, is definitely going to happen. In time via your shout? Oh no. I didn't even realize it. I didn't even realize that that's back. Oh boy. That's not great. 
Yeah, I'm not attacking you. I'm trying to catch you, man. Okay. Am I gonna need a critical capture for this guy? Apparently. Goodness. We might have been able to find it in the cave, and it might have been better to do that. To just, like, go in that cave, but anyway. Yes. And we are also going to name this one. Bonnie. Because I want to save one of our bunnies. Not so. So let's go ahead, teleport out of here. We'll fly out of here, rather. So we don't have teleport. And then we'll OK portal it up. Oh my gosh, you don't even list them all? What an absolute joke. Right. Did they... There we go. Easy peasy. So zero three seven eight to zero three eight four. Three seven eight to zero three eight four, right? We'll see. We'll see how uh, how easy it is to find an iron hands for a brute bonnet. Nope. Guy doesn't even have finnison or ditto. What the heck? One more, uh, if we, one more and we'll reverse it and see how easy it is to find it on the other side. Yeah, Violet is more popular, but, um, at the same time, uh, Iron Hands is, a lot of people want Iron Hands. Alright. One more and then we'll see about... Uh, reversing it, the zero three eight four four zero three seven eight. Actually, wait, that wouldn't work because that's not how that works. Uh oh, uh oh, it's looking like it's gonna be another issue, another one of those. Yeah, so the, the 0384 to 0378, that actually wouldn't work this time, um, just because, uh, um, uh, because it, the, uh, the starter Pokemon, like, it was designed around the whole concept of, like, what you have versus what you were looking for. This one, it's just straight up 0378-0384, whether, you know, whichever one you have, and whichever one you're looking for. But I'll try it. Yeah. 
So that's that's the fifth one, and still still nothing. So a lot of people want iron hands. What are you gonna do? And we can't breed it, so there's no way we can, like, hands it forward or something like that. Oh. Found someone. Oh, there it is. Well, I guess that works. Oh well. Hopefully this doesn't have a lot of EVs on it. Hopefully it has zero EVs on it. Cause that's kind of the whole point. Pure untouched iron hands, so we don't have to feed it any uh, any berries. I can't even think. The only ones that I'm thinking of are the kelpsy berries and pomeg berries, and we don't want to feed it those if it has the IVs. If the, it has the EVs already, it is very similar to a cyborg covered exclusively by a paranormal magazine. The cyborg was said to be modified be the modified form of a certain athlete. It's fighting an electric. For some reason I was thinking we were going to be able to nickname it, but no, you only nick you don't nickname trade traded pokemon. What am I, what am I thinking? All right, so step 1. Uh don't do that. Let's see summary. If it's got... Yeah, it looks like it uh, was not provided anything, so good. That, that's good. Um, so we need to give it an adamant mint. Uh, is it in here? Yes, adamant mint. And then we'll go ahead and give it all the EXP candy it could ever want. We got 112. See, this is why I was doing the... Uh... Oh, hey, there's Wild Charge. Yeah, cool. Slam, Force Palm, Seismic Tosk. Okay. None of those are ones that we want. But, um, yeah, this is why I was doing raids. Is you see all these EXP candies? Ooh, close combat. Yes, we need that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, try 50. Quite a lot. Detect, no. And then heavy slam, no. Belly drum, yes, that's the other. So yeah, we've we've got the full full set now. Um, because I do know that we have drain punch. All right, so maybe 20. Oh, we're close. Nope. And... Ooh. Actually, more than we needed for uh, what I was planning. I was planning on giving it some rare candies. Oh, well, we can give it one rare candy now. Level 100. And then... And then what we're gonna do... Um, actually, I'm gonna see if maybe... Um, maybe it has Drain Punch in its learn set, and it just doesn't... No, okay, so... Bag. I, I actually got this the other day. Drain Punch. There it is. Force Pump. All right, cool. So we've got the full, the full setup. Now we just need to pump it full of drugs and bottle caps. Uh, speaking of, how many bottle caps do we have? Where are they? 
think they're here? Yeah. So we've got three. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, it also is going to want booster energy. What is its ability, by the way? Spark Drive. Boost this Pokemon's most proficient stat on electric terrain, or if the Pokemon is holding booster energy. Cool. Um, so, let's fly over to Mon Montene Montenevera. Um, get to the dude that uh, does the... Uh, Hyper training. We'll see if he's got any perfect IVs before uh, before we actually uh, start buying bottle caps. Uh, oh, this was the wrong side. He's over. Yeah, he's over here. Hyper training. Get it here. What do you say? You want one of your Pokemon to go through hyper training? So which Pokemon do you want me to hop a train? You want to use bottle caps or gold bottle caps? Can you even get gold bottle caps in this game? What stat do you want me to raise? Maybe in six star raids. Okay, so yeah, he's got nothing. So we'll get these two and then we'll get two more bottle caps. Hope you're ready. Let's get to hop training. How do you like my voice for this guy, by the way? Enhances hyper training is complete. It becomes stronger. You want to continue hyper training? Maybe another time then. Yeah, no, I'll be back. Don't worry about that. So, Chansey Supply over here. Um, they should have. Actually, maybe it's Delibird Gifts that has that. Um. Anyway, uh, so. We actually, so a lot of people are uh, giving them 26 of these. You don't need to give them 26. 25, and then give them two of the feathers associated with it. Two health feathers, two uh, mighty feathers. Um, and that's, uh, that's a way to save 20,000 Poke Yen. And then... Please remember to follow the recommended dosage. Yeah, good luck with that. And then I'm not sure what else we should do, because uh, that'll give us four um, EVs that we can put somewhere else. And I'm not sure what we should put that in. I was thinking either defense or special defense. Uh, yeah, probably which whichever is lower, to be honest. Or, uh, actually, you know, I've got an idea. So, um, oh, actually, let me, let me show you. So... You can see uh, 449 HP, 347 attack. 449, 347. And then... This one... 25 of each of those. And then two health feathers. Which... See, if you're taking on rates, they, they do drop these feathers quite a bit. So we actually didn't even need the 25 of those. Um, we could have gotten away with, like, 18, 18 uh, um, proteins. And, um, yeah. Anyway. Wait, I gave those to... Hold on. Who did I give these to? Uh... Hold on, actually. Yeah, so, uh, resist feathers. No. Clever feathers. Hold on, let me make sure. I think I might have given the muscle feathers to Pyro. Okay. Yeah, because it won't have any effect. Whoopsies. Anyway, so now it's at 512 um, HP and and 416 attack. So we gained almost 70 attack 
and we gained uh, um, almost 70 HP or 60 63 HP I think it was uh, from that so yeah no it's this good idea to do oh and uh, the bottle caps right um, I think those are what deli bird presents though I think we need to go to uh, to make it mega goza let me check though yeah unfortunately And there's PP up, by the way. You can buy it uh, here. Then Mesa Goza. Um, there's a Deli Bird presence right here, so we can uh, we can head over there. And I'm pretty sure they're the ones that carry the bottle caps, which is a little bizarre because you have the EV items, you have the nature items, both from Chansey Supply, and I'm. From in in fact from this chancy supply, which is in the same town where you can get hyper training, but for some reason you can't. Uh, I don't know. World doesn't even make sense anymore to me. And actually, I do want to check. Yeah, so it's an electric terra type, which isn't great. Um, oops. I want to check um, to see how many fighting terra type shards we have and if we have enough because I think you need 20 fast fighting yeah so 23 we might go ahead and change its terror type we'll see we'll see how well it does Welcome to Deli Bird Presents. We've got, we've great gifts galore. What'll it be? General goods. Yep. And then bottle caps. We don't need to increase its special attack because it's not going to be using any special attacks. Thanks for stopping by. Have yourself the Deli Best Day. All right. But well, we do need to increase its speed and its special defense. I mean, at least I know it'll warn you that the feathers and the stuff won't have any effect. What do you say? Do you want one of your Pokemon to go through Hapa training? So, which Pokemon do you want me to Hapa train? Do you want to use Bottle Caps or a Gold Bottle Cap? Which stat do you want me to raise? You're ready. Let's get to hyper training. Iron Hand's hyper training is complete. It's become strong. Do you want to continue hyper training? Maybe another time then. Yeah. No, don't worry. I will be back. Just not with Iron Hands because Iron Hands has the best stats that he can get now. So this, this is what your Iron Hands should look like. The special attack, it's going to vary because, you know, we're not hyper. We haven't hyper trained it. So... You might get, like, higher special attack or lower special attack. It does not matter. Um, but this is what it should look like. You can use PP ups on any of these if you want, um, but you shouldn't need to, which seems weird because Close Count Combat only has five uh, PP, but you're going to see some some crazy stuff here. I was thinking of maybe, like, showing, like, oh, yeah, this is what it's like without it. This is what it's like, you know, if I use one of my regular Pokemon, and this is what it's like if I use... But no. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just gonna show you just how badly this dude destroys. Or seems to destroy. I don't know. Maybe all these, all these videos I watched of it were fake. You never know. All right. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pop down a hard save. 
and I'm going to go into the options, and I'm going to turn off autosave. It's a blissey. All right, so this should actually be fine. And actually, yeah, it's gonna be. Oh, Blissey does not have good defense. It's got a lot of HP, which is not good with raids. But it doesn't have a lot of defense. It doesn't have a lot of attack, so it shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue for us to set up and then just absolutely destroy it. If if Fury type isn't weak to fighting. Again, I don't remember. I'm still getting used to fairy type. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, Belly Drum, for those of you that don't know, maximizes attack. Which seems like really overpowered for a move. It's... Oh, and Quark Drive also. It's boosting its, uh, um, its attack. Um, yeah, so it maximizes attack, but... Cuts its HP in half, which is why we have Drain Punch. Dazzling Gleam shouldn't do too much to us. Oh, it's super effective. Oh. Is this actually a really bad idea? Oh boy. Not very effective, huh? But we still healed full. So I think, um, hold on, so damage is a usual, yeah, we probably want to avoid that, so we're going to go ahead and close combat, which does plenty of damage, but yeah, we probably should have done the Golden Go strategy with the Steel Beam uh, for, for this one. And see, it's got the it's got the uh, shield up. We still can't terrestrialize because it's not been three turns. Oh, wait, no, it has been three turns, but it hasn't been. Oh, well, that was not uh, great. So we're gonna go ahead and wild charge it. Uh, okay, yeah, that was a crit. Uh, we're you know, what? let's go ahead and just kill ourselves. So that way we can terrestrialize with full health. Or almost full health. And then we can wild charge it. So far from uh, fighting type being super effective. Uh, and we missed that, so that's good. Uh, yeah, so far from fighting types being super effective against. Uh, um, these guys, um, they're not very effective, and, uh, eh, it's unfortunate. And fairy type is actually super effective against fighting, so that's unfortunate. Light screen, yeah, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be really effective against this. We're gonna drain punch before we wild charge. I don't know... See, I still don't know how uh, terrestrializing works in with the shield. Like, do you need to hit them with the uh, with the type that uh, that you're terrestrialized to in order to do this, or what? But see, even with the shield up, it still drains a lot of energy. Yeah, sing really. This should get us to full, or at least near full. Um, might attack us. Yeah, that shouldn't do a whole lot. And if it Dazzling Gleams us, it's not going to do quite as much damage because it's not super effective anymore. Oh boy. I 
Well, that didn't work out too well, did it? It's fine. It's fine. We still have time. Um, so I think what I am going to do is I am going to uh, switch. To, this is basically like the worst Pokemon to do this against. Oh boy. And then it hits with Sing. Because of course it does. Um, and you know what? We're going to run. I'm going to switch its uh, terror type to fighting, see if that improves it. Because uh, we don't want to be using wild charge against this. I thought it was it was, I thought it was going to be good. I thought it was going to be great, but because wild charge... Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't disappear if we fail it. Alright, so... But, as I alluded to before, we can, in fact, change its terror type. And, that, and we do that by... We, by going to Medali City. Yeah, th this one would definitely be one for the uh, the Steel Beam Golden Go. Um, even though Blissey does have really good special defense. So yeah, we, we talked to the chef lady here. Want to change any Pokemon's terror type? Oh, look at that. Hey, it's you, the student who beat Larry. That was some fine battling. You're something, kid. I'll let you in on a special dish I only make for my favorite customers. One that changes a Pokemon's terror type. I just need these special ingredients called terror shards. Whenever you get your mitts on them, come let me know. Since you're a first timer, I'll give you enough to change a Pokemon's terror type to normal. Okay, so, wait, do we need 50, then? Brought me some terror shards so I can whip up a terror type changing dish. Oh. Dang. Oh, let me go ahead and confirm. Does this work? It works like this? I make... need 50 terror shards. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I'm just gonna focus on, uh, um... And yeah, I think I, I do need to actually uh, give the PP ups to this dude, so so this close combat works. As intended. On the plus side, um, Thrasalizing to Electric. Um, does stop Dazzling Gleam from being super effective. We'll try this again. So basically, um, we're probably not going to die. Um, not unless the, ch the Blissey puts us to sleep and... Oops. That's what I was trying to do. Not unless the Blissey puts us to sleep and we get we kind of screw ourselves in that regard. Uh, like it, it puts us to sleep when we're low on health and then it just dazzling gleams us to death. So unless it does that, we're gonna be fine. Um, but yeah, it's right now it's not looking great for us. I'm telling you though, it would look a lot worse if we were try gonna if we were to try to use Cookie or or uh, um, Pyro. Right, so this is <laughs> it's showing off this like this, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, you you remember last stream how difficult it was for us to take on five star raids. It's gotten easier now that Cookie's at level 100, Pyro's at level 100, and I've kind of fixed their stats a little bit. Not completely, but a little bit. It's gotten a lot easier, but it's still not a guaranteed win for me for these 5-star raids. Oh, Intimidate on the Blissey. That'll, that'll work wonders. So 
Belly Drum. Hope it doesn't do a Dazzling Green Queen Crit. Because that's probably the only thing that would kill us. Light Screen. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. So even though it's not very effective, it still did that massive chunk of damage, and that was enough to uh, um, to fully heal us from half. Which, not hard against a Blissey, but yeah, still. We'll just Drain Punch, um, and then anytime we're at full health, like anytime it doesn't actually attack us, Defense Scroll, oh gosh. Now that's not great. Double Defense Scroll? Seriously? What a jerk. Although, then again, Blissey's defense is so low, it doesn't really even matter. Yeah, anytime we're at full health, um, then we'll go ahead and use close combat. And keep in mind, um, raids are exponentially harder as you go up. So, four-star raids are exponentially harder than three-star raids. Um... Five-star raids are exponentially harder than uh, four-star raids, and um, six-star raids are supposed to be exponentially harder than five-star raids. So, with my normal setup, it wasn't guaranteed that I would survive, but or it wasn't wasn't guaranteed uh, for five-star raids. But this is it's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. And honestly, even if we just continue spamming drain punch, we'll probably be fine here. And uh, once we switch over to Terra type, yeah, once we terrestrialize, um, that's not going to be doing. Uh, um, Dazzling Gleam isn't going to be doing enough damage to uh, out damage our heals from Drain Punch. Yeah, it does seem to do more damage when you're terrestrialized, even... Yeah, it definitely does. Um, even if it's not the stab attack for, for the terrestrialization. So I think when you terrestrialize, it doesn't ignore the shield, but it reduces the effect of the shield. Of course you'd sing. Fine, because I can just belly drum again. Um, maybe not actually. Shoot. I kind of have to hope that it doesn't attack us, or that it misses. Or that it doesn't do much damage. Okay, we're running. We'll try again! We'll try again! We'll, we'll get it this time. Um, I do want to feed uh, some uh, PP up to, uh, to my Iron Hands for, uh, um, um, for its, uh, for its drain punch, though. We'll try again, and we'll get it this time. I promise. Okay? I would like to feed more PP ups, but I'm not gonna waste the time to, to head into town and grab more. Oh, we have two. Never mind. Uh, so that's actually that should be fine. Gives us four more uses of drain punch.
Oh, we have Toxapex on our side. Hopefully that'll be... that'll be good. Yeah, that was just, uh, that was just really bad timing. Um, on the Sing, plus... Staying asleep forever and then nullifying the, uh, the stat changes. Oh yeah, it's steel and poison that are uh, that are super effective against fairy. That's right. Oh yeah, I also forgot about the double defense curl. Although it's base base defense is so low, it's not really boosting by that much. Fifty-five percent accuracy. Although, actually, maybe they buff the accuracy. Wake up. Wake up, Iron Hands, please! Please wake up! Please wake up! Trying to get me to kill myself with belly dr with belly drum. That was a little sketch. Well, let's see. Is this gonna be enough? Heal us out of out of the range of uh, of dazzling gleam. Okay, that's fine. We can belly drum, and then we'll be able to. Well, we can terrestrialize actually in belly drum. And that way, we won't be hit super effectively um, by uh, um, by dazzling claim. Now, we should be able to drain punch quite a lot of health back. Spamming Dazzling Gleam for the longest time. I really should rearrange it so that Drain Punch is at the top. Thank you, goodness. Finally, Sing misses. I don't know, maybe we should have Wild Charged instead of uh, Drain Punching that last time. Of course it would use Sing! Why wouldn't it use Sing? Why wouldn't it hit? Please tell me I'm not gonna be stuck in this forever.
Oh my god! Can you please stop with the singing and the hitting of the sing? This is why people use Golden Goat, by the way. One of the reasons. I, I might just have to, like, go and find where to find all the all the uh, gimme ghouls so that I can get 999 of these coins and, and get this set up. Get the thing set up for for Golden Go. Try and take this thing down. Even though it's a special wall, um, I think Golden Go has a better matchup against it, especially um, with the steel type, steel typing um, moves. And we just sing. It, it just sings again. Just sings again. That's that. That's. All hope I had. All hope I had. Vanished. Vanished in an incident. Alright. I'm gonna take a break. When we come back, um, we'll do the other 100, uh, or the other 50 uh, Quaxleys. And then I'm gonna try and do Golden Go. Golden Go thing. We'll see. Um. No, let's not. Let's go to Montan Montanavera. Ah. Uh. <sighs> so Steel Beam, Golden Go. I do have Steel Beam. Other stuff, but anyway. Yeah. Okay, you know what? If you're so cold, then fine. We'll, we'll go someplace else. It's nice and warm. There. We'll go to Mesa Goza. Go ahead and do a different one. Start out with a different one. Anyway. So yeah, I'll be back.
first time of today Yeah. 
So unfortunately, the water that was in my, uh, um, that's in my, oops, sorry, that's in my, uh, water pitcher, there's, the uh, water filter pitcher, there's not enough for me to make another cup of tea, the bottle of water that I, uh, um, I brought in the other day, I can't find it, so... All I got to drink is a bottle of milk, or not bottle of milk, um, a glass of milk, and, uh, yeah, and pour it. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get started on, actually, uh, uh, let's go ahead and get started on the other, the other traits. Hold on, I need to turn auto saves back on. Your Majesty? Okay.
Not sure how we're gonna how well we're gonna be able to do for the uh, for the whole gimme ghoul thing. Um, we might be uh, pretty low on money. We might need to farm a few uh, lower tier raids in order to get the money. I think we'll be fine with the EXP candy we have, um, but we'll see. I do want to catch um, a level 50 instead of trying to level up the uh, the level 15, I think it is. 10 or 15 that we have, um, but we'll see if we run into any level 50s. There you are. Goodness, come on.
Jerko, huh? Probably an appropriate name for a dude who's trading Meow Scaradas instead of, uh... Sprigatito. I hope he bred that. Before, uh, before sending it over. I don't know. Person hasn't evolved their starter into a meows into a Meowscarada yet. But is working to get get the others the other starters. No oh, props time. It'd be kind of cool to to go through the game with a team of of the the three starters. Let's see. Plus a uh, lechonk, a squawkabilly, and what else? Max Caliber. Or a cloth, maybe. I'm a slide to read here. Sorry, read. You're getting a Quaxley, not a Sprigatito. If we will actually agree to the trade, you will. So uh, put us over halfway for this for this uh, trade code.
I'm gonna have to organize these a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Um. That's gonna have to. That's gonna be off camera. You know, I was thinking, um, they might include, like, some sort of lottery system, like they've had, I'm pretty sure every game has had one since, uh, since Gold and Silver. Pretty sure Sun and Moon had one, I don't know about Sword and Shield. Um, you know, the one that checks the original trainer on all the Pokemon in, um, in your party and in your box. And so maybe, instead of... Releasing them, I'll just save them um, for cases like that. Anytime to thank, thank you, my guy. I'm trying to give you a Quaxley. Come on, you've been needing one. I know, you've been waiting for one. I know, because you've been hanging out in this trade code. Which, by the way, you remember when I was saying how, um, yeah, you know, the other trade code we weren't going to be coming across any any Quaxleys uh, for the reasons I was saying. But still, we're 60 percent of the way through this trade code, and we still haven't seen anybody trading for Quaxleys. A trade in there, Quaxley Forest Brigatito. So, yeah, that's a. Uh, um, I mean, I believe I said that it took me like two hours to to get my Quaxley. Possibly even more. Um, but yeah, that's. Yeah, just so you're aware. It do be like that. it forward to Maple. Goodbye, quacks it forward. So, 400 with 30 in each box means I'm going to need 13 in a third box. So, we'll say 14 boxes for um, my living decks. And then I also want to get all of the EVs with their special Terra types from the event raids. Um, as well as a few other ones, a few other things. So, we'll say maybe 15 or 16 boxes. Uh, for that, which will leave me another 16 boxes for uh, quaxing it forward. And the thing is, is like, even with uh, um, even with the best shiny odds with the Masuda method, uh, that's so. That's four hundred eighty. I believe the best odds with the Masuda method are like five hundred. What? One five hundred and twelve for a shiny um, Quaxley. So, yeah. Unless I start releasing some of these Pokemon that we're getting for this, I I may not actually ever uh, get a shiny Quaxley 
to uh, to trade out into the Quaxit forward. It's just kind of wild that you can fill half of your box with eggs and it still not be enough. But I don't know. if I do get a shiny Quaxley, I'm gonna be putting it on Wonder Trade. I'm gonna be Wonder Trading it away. Ooh. I did not. I, I did not cancel the trade. Don't lie. Stop lying. Six percent of the way done with this trade code, and still we have not come across a single person trading their Quaxley for a Sprigatito. Yeah, I just, I just need to stress just how badly people need to Quax it forward. This guy doesn't have a Quaxley. Whoa, oh, but he thought that we weren't. We weren't gonna trade him a Quaxley. See, this is, I keep saying this, but it's so important. The vast majority of people that are that are in these trade codes with Quaxleys already have the other starters. But they've recognized that it's that it's a very that Quaxley is is very much in demand, and so they're trying to help out. So do not use the whole white background thing. Alright? Don't don't do that. Don't be like, oh well, it's got, he's got a white background for my on Sprigatito, or he doesn't have a white background on Sprigatito, so he must not have a Quaxley. He must be trying to trade a Sprigatito. No no no, no no no, no no no. I mean, it would kind of be nice if we could, like, instead of setting trade codes, we could set, like, what we were looking for. And we could say, oh, I've got a Quaxley, and I'm looking for a Sprigatito. Any level. Any moves. Anything. Doesn't matter. And then, uh, um, be like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a lot of people looking for the Quaxleys. So yeah, I'm in if when I do future Scarlet um, streams, I am planning on doing some more Quaxley giveaways. I'm not planning on being 100 uh, Quaxleys each stream. I was thinking more like 20 to 30 would be better. Would be about right. Like I could I could do 20 to 30. Um, I mean, I'll probably mass breed them. You know, um, while I'm doing other stuff, I'll probably mass breed them. Um, but as far as like actually hatching the eggs, uh, maybe just like 20 or 30. 
and then be like, okay, I'll trade these at the start of the stream. Just however many I have is how it's gonna be. We are an endangered species, guys. We gotta we gotta do our best to uh, to repopulate the Quaxley population. anybody that shows up in chat and is like hey i really need a quaxley we i can direct them to my discord and i can say hey listen just like tell me what trade code you want to use um and we can we can use that and i can uh trade uh trade them a quaxley but, and hopefully they'll quax it forward Sacha. that's uh german right no oh, French. Oh yeah, that's German was like Freulein, not actually Freulein. You know what I mean? Freulein or something like that. See, I don't even need to look. I don't even need to check. I can just mash A through the trading process and be pretty much guaranteed that I'm not dealing with another Quaxley. I mean, even just aside from the whole whole white background thing. I don't even need to pay attention to that. I don't even need to look. There's just no Quaxleys to be found. They're extinct in the wild. Mass breeding program is the only way to do it. Last one for this trade code, and then we move on to the uh, Fue Coco trade code. Honestly, I figured that the only chance, really, for us to um, be running into another Quaxley um, trader was in this trade code, because I seriously doubt that, uh, um, yeah, and see this white background. 
Don't care. Don't care what's in the egg. I, I really don't. Um. Yeah, so. Um. I, I don't think we're gonna be running into any Quaxley traders in the first one. One, just because, like I said, Fue Coco was so much more popular of a starter than, uh, um. It was Brigatito. Take good care of the egg. No. So, yeah, if we didn't run into any in the Foy Coco or in the uh, Sprigatito trades, then we're not going to run into any in the Foy Coco trade. I mean, it, not likely. It's always possible. You know, random chance. But, well, we'll see. I really needed that tea, didn't I? Oh boy. Don't like I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> and definitely uh saving up doing the full 100 was probably not the best of ideas. Is a, is a good amount, both in terms of, like, the time that it'll take to, uh, for me to breed and hatch them, as well as the time it'll take for me to, you know, get them traded at the start of, uh, uh, the start of the streams. <laughs> Twenty to thirty per week is not a whole lot, but hopefully people will fax it forward, and, um, that'll be, that'll... That'll help the Quaxley population return to its uh, to its previous numbers before it became endangered, before it became extinct in the wild.
I guess that's something that you can do while you while you trade your <laughs> your wax lace if you're gonna be doing something like this. Um, you can go ahead and take a nap during each of the trades, and then you get this nice little alarm clock that'll wake you up. Sorry, this isn't a very exciting stream, I know. We didn't even actually successfully take down that six-star raid. But we will! Or I trying. Really, I should try Thunder Punch instead of uh, instead of Wild Charge. Actually, that might that might do it. That might be enough, frankly. Even with Sing, um, just not a recoil move. Because my goodness, I, I don't know why I saw Wild Charge on that and on that loadout. Because so the the six star raids have like what. 10, 20, 30 times as much health as normal. It's ridiculous. And your belly drum, even at full health, you're gonna you're gonna kill yourself. Which I guess is is fine in some ways, but it's not anyway. Um Come on. You know. There we go. Let's see, so there's the metal sound, there's the nasty plot, so yeah. Naked Rain does a lot of damage, actually. I mean, yeah, you can only use you can only use it eight times with full PP ups, but I'm not sure why we you wouldn't do that instead of Steel Beam. I was just checking to make sure that I've got everything that I need for uh, um, for the Golden Go thing. Um, I might need some more money, but we'll see. Make it rain inflicts damage and lowers the user's special attack by one stage. In a battle with multiple opponents, make it rain will attack. Yeah, honestly, that sounds better than Steel Beam. Steel Beam is 140 with 95 cent 95% accuracy. So yeah, make it rain is just just straight better. So I don't know why I'm I went and got the Steel Beam. <laughs> steel Beam also, by the way, does damage to you. Um I don't I don't know if there's recoil. If it's actual recoil or if it does like half your health and damage or something like that. And the user takes damage equal to half of its maximum HP rounded up. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. Oh, whoops. Wait, did we? Hold on. Oh. We already traded with this guy, didn't we? I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to this. Of course. Of course, there's one of these spam bots. Bye. I mean, you know what? I, I don't mind... <laughs> I don't mind giving this guy two Quaxleys, I guess? <laughs> Thank you. 
If he's gonna quacks it forward, I, I, I hope. That certainly makes it a little bit easier. But, yeah, not really. Mm. I'm gonna have to fix that. By, uh, by using one of the, uh, One of the ones that was intended for, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, yeah, one of the Pokemon that was intended for, uh, Wonder Trading. So we'll do two Wonder Trades instead of three. You know, another point about, um, about the whole exclusives is that I really need to start working on getting a second, uh, Armor Rouge. That I can trade for, uh, um, for a Cerule Edge. Oh, that's right. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, and there's recover. So, yeah. Uh, so the 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 loadout, not the loadout. The uh, the move set. Um. For Golden Go, is uh, Metal Sound. That's forty percent of the way done with this trade code. Uh, Metal Sound, Nasty Plot, Recover, and Make It Rain. Uh, a lot of people use Steel Beam. I really don't see the point in that, because it's it's got 20 more base power, but it does half of your health and damage. So you're you're still you're gonna have to go steel beam recover steel beam recover steel beam recover rather than make it rain make it rain make it rain make it rain. So I, I really don't see the point in that. Um, um, at the current time we've got something like five or not five four hundred fifty. Uh, Gimme Ghoul coins. I have a map to all the, the Gimme Ghoul chest locations, um, so we should be able to get the rest from that pretty easily. Um, the only issue is I don't think I have enough money um, to, to get the bottle caps, to get the vitamins, and to get the mint that we need. Because we need... I mean, we need 500,000 just for the vitamins alone. Um, we can take a discount for the feathers that we have and for the... What is it? Calcium? Yeah, I think it's calcium that increases special attack. Um, that we already have. But that's still not great. And then we need 100,000 for the bottle caps and then 20,000 for the mint. So that's 620,000 that we need with maybe a discount of, I don't know, 100,000. 
Um, now that can come in Poké Yen or uh, um, League Points. Any combination thereof. Well, any combination with the, you know, 10,000s. You know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, um, Um, it's, we don't have enough money, I don't think. So we're gonna, um, I'm gonna go, we're gonna try and get some raids. We're, we can also sell off, like, some mints and things like that. So that'll be fine. Second Sprigatito that we've gotten. The first one, I think, might have been, um... Might have I, I might have accidentally double traded. You know, I could just check, I guess. I could check and see if it, that Fue Coco and the uh, Fue Coco, right? Fuego. In Fuego. Caliente. Um, anyway, if the, that um, Fue Coco and uh, Sprigatito have the same... Uh, the same trainer, so we're gonna do that. Because we're either halfway done or we're not halfway done. What? Oh no, oops. of hash which its original trainer got from a picnic it has wait how do i check the original trainer oh breaking oh boy Oops. whereas this one is fahrenheit zero so no i guess not i guess it was just a random sprigatito instead of fue coco in the uh in the fue coco trade so what we can do uh, three surprise trades with these guys, after all. Oof. Oof. Honestly, I wouldn't blame people for, uh, for putting up the Fue Cocos in the surprise trades rather than, uh, rather than in these trades codes. Um, if they're gonna quax it forward. because I think the surprise trades are going to be a lot faster. see if there's any physical electric moves that are stronger than Thunder Punch, but also does do not do recoil like Wild Charge does. Um, let's see. That uh, Iron Hands can learn. No. So yeah, it's just Thunder Punch that we're going to be using instead of, uh, um, instead of Wild Charge. No. Alright, 
60% of the way done. Try one more time with uh, with Thunder Punch instead of Wild Charge, and uh, um, we'll see if that'll work. Um. Otherwise, um, we'll go ahead and do the whole Golden Go thing. Raids are actually really good, by the way. Um, doing uh, doing these raids is actually really good for for monies. So, uh, um, highly recommend. Let me think about this. So, 65, 130, with same type attack bonus. Close combat, give me just one moment. How much damage is close combat? It's 120, so 180 with same type attack bonus. Yeah, so um, because it's not very effective, close combat should effectively be 90 base power versus thunder punch. Oh, no, thunder punch is 75, so it's, so it's 150. So it's so it's 90 base power for wild charge or not not 90 uh yeah 90 base power for close combat versus 150 for thunder punch after terrestrialization so we should actually be doing more damage without the downside of close combat
Uh, this guy already has a Quaxley. Interesting. Or he had a Quaxley at some point. I don't know. Maybe he figures trading for him is easier than breeding him. Which is ridiculous. Breeding, breeding Pokemon has never been easier. And, uh... Yeah, trying to... Trying to get a Quaxley from, uh, um... From a Link trade is, uh... Pretty bad. I'm wondering if it's actually easier to get it from a Wonder trade. I'd like to see. Wait, did we? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Did I? Did I screw that up? Did we find a partner and I backed out? Oh, crap. I think that's what happened. I'm sorry. I was paying attention to something else. person that already has a... <gasps> Wait a second! We finally did it! We finally freaking found a person uh, that that has has a Quaxley that, that was looking for, for something else. I was, I was certain that wasn't going to happen, but one in a hundred. Think about that. One in a hundred. Not, not even that. Well, yeah, because we, we, um, there were those people who backed out thinking that you know, we weren't, we didn't have a Quaxley, that we were looking for one. Wait, what? Sure. I'll help him out. 
Why not? And then we've got another one. And then we've got another Quaxley to trade away. Is that shiny? That's not shiny, right? The shiny one has, like, a bit more of a green tint to it, right? Or am I crazy? So we ran into two Quaxleys in a row. That's that's a little ridiculous to be honest with you. So now it went from one in a hundred to one in fifty. I got more Quaxleys I still need to give away. Alright. What? Why? Well, good luck finding another Quaxley. Because boy, is it going to take you a while. they weren't paying attention. Maybe they just saw the, the lack of a white background and were like, well... Okay. They registered that a little late. Maybe they're a real-life slowpoke. Seems familiar. Hmm. You know, when it does this thing, right, when they go by like that, honestly, that kind of looks a little bit like a luxury ball to me. Am I crazy? I, I know it doesn't have, like, the, the lines around the, the above and below the button, but it just, it kind of, it kind of looks like a luxury ball. I think it's the color scheme and the multiple stripes that are tricking my mind. Right. And then, uh... A little bit longer. Oh, won't you stay? Just a little bit longer. Please, please, please. Actually, no, that doesn't come until later. Hold on. Oh, won't you stay 
just a little bit longer please 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 say you will say you well if you don't mind and your mama don't mind we can take a little time and leave it all behind sing one more song oh won't you stay just a little bit And then the last one for these. Uh, I want to check something else actually with the iron hands. Drain punch. Where's drain punch. Oh, that's right. It doesn't learn it by level up at the TM. Drain punch is 75. Same type attack bonus. Um, 107.5. So it's like 52 or something like that. So yeah, Thunder Punch is going to do a lot more damage than Drain Punch. So I'm, 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 I'm confident in... Registered Trademark sent over Foy Coco. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to do the Wonder Trades. Or the Surprise Trades, rather. I would like to do a Wonder Lock. With a surprise trade, you don't choose who you'll trade with or what you'll get. Just choose a Pokemon you're willing to part with from your box, and your, and your trade will be carried out automatically. You'll need an internet connection to use this feature. Guarantee we're going to get Lechonks and Squawkabillies and, um, and things like that. Uh, okay. Surprise trade completed. Okay. Check. What do we get? To Cisco. Also young young goose and uh things like that. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh, he was trying to get a Quaxley from the Wonder Trade! And he did! Oh my gosh! How about that? How about that? I think that means it's done. Um... Thunder Punch. And ta da! Iron Hands go up. I'll charge and. Alright. So it, it definitely. Yeah. Definitely completed. Definitely, definitely completed. Yeah, definitely completed. Z. this time a hop -ip. yeah that's that's the other kind of thing you'll get from the wonder trades is, so there's it's yeah it's gonna be like squawkabillies and tarantulas and all those and starlies and it's like early root pokemon people just just throw it into the surprise trades the wonder trades it forward to Davy. Guarantee this is not a Maridon. It's an Igly buff. Yeah, so like I said, 
This is this is how the Wonder Trade works. Um, but yeah, I would like to maybe uh, get a copy of Pokemon Violet and do a Wonder Lock of it. No. Um. Anyway, so let's let's try what? No. Boy. What? Oh gosh, darn it! I gotta. I gotta wait before I check my map. Okay, are we done now? Can I check my map? Thank you. <sighs> How rude. Head to the spot, yes. So we're gonna try this one more time. With, this time with Thunder Punch instead of... Instead of Wild Charge. And uh, basically the, the plan is that... Um, We'll be using. We'll be using Drain Punch just to get ourselves up to full, and then we'll just be using Thunder Punch all the way, basically. Um, there's a Dragon Trainer over there. Looking for a Backscalibur, are you? Take a little time and leave us leave us all behind. Sing one more song. Oh, won't you stay? If the game like really screws us on this though, we'll go ahead and um, try again. Light screen. The drain punch, and then as long as it doesn't give us too much trouble, then we'll go ahead and uh, switch over to thunder punch. Dazzling gleam. Let's see. What does that do? Not a whole lot. So I feel safe using thunder punch kind of seen how much that does. A lot. It does a lot. As long as this doesn't crit, then we're good, basically. Except it keeps using Defense Curl. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually starting to wonder if maybe Meow Scarada would have been the way to go for this. Well, no, Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam would have been uh, too rough for us to deal with. Okay, now we can Terrastalize and Drain Punch. Um, and that should get us close to full health, um, and then and Dazzling Gleam won't be super effective anymore. Good, 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 good vibrations, papa. Excitations, good, 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 good vibrations, papa. So now, Hyper Voice is fine, and then Thunder Punch, which should be neutrally effective, so that should do actually quite a little, lot of damage. 
what I say. And that's even with two defense curls, by the way. Yeah, that actually might have screwed us. If we wake up, we probably want to be thunder punching. Um, and if we die, that's fine, because we can just come back and we can belly drum. Um, but we really... Oh, frozen. Nice. That is that is so nice, actually. We really want to get past the shield. Really, is what it comes down to. Because um, once we get past the shield, uh, it's not going to be an issue. No. This is what I'm talking about with it. Game trying to screw us. Oh, that's right. Uh, I can try drain punching. I mean, without the shield, it's gonna heal us quite a bit. Can uh, belly drum. One more, and then we can belly drum. And honestly, one belly drum, the thunder punch is gonna be pretty great. Oh, you know what? Actually, we can just thunder punch it to death. As long as it doesn't sing us to sleep, then we're good. There it is. We successfully soloed a six-star raid. Even even going with the wrong strategy. <laughs> the wrong Pokemon. We're gonna catch all of these in luxury balls. We gotta. We gotta. Look at that smile. You he knows what he did. He knows what he did. That smirk. Okay. Ability patch, two ability capsules. Um, ability patch gets you a um, gets you the hidden ability of the Pokemon. By the way, um, ability capsule switches between their main abilities. Can't unlock the hidden ability. Bitter Herba Mystica. Um, that's nice. Um, we could actually use that um, the ability patch on our Meowscarada and get it Protean, which. Uh, um, anyway, and then just some other stuff. There we did it. We did it. There we go. I'm gonna... <laughs> so we're, we got one more raid to do. So, yeah, that's the first six-star raid. And, uh... Anyone who takes even one taste of Blissey's egg becomes unfailingly caring and pleasant to everyone. Yes. What should we name? What should we name it? What should we name the Blissey that, uh, um, that was our first six-star raid? The solo. Uh, that is exactly the right length.
Rototototo. Hey, Jack. Ray, this is Jack. Jack. We just saw the terrestrial energy reading from one of the black crystal crystals disappear a moment ago. Do you know anything about that? I won. <laughs> it sure was rough. <laughs> what? You battled the Pokemon there? Uh, I thought I made it clear that it was too risky. Well, in any case, case. I'm just glad that you're okay, Ray. Your efforts have helped us come to understand the laws governing terrestrial energy emissions. Thanks for your help. I'm sending you something as a thank you gift. Still, hey, 10,000 LP. Nice. That's... Wow. <laughs> Honestly, that's pretty pathetic. Still, even after all this, it seems that the amount of energy being emitted is slowly growing. That means we may continue to see more black crystals appear in the future. I don't imagine you'll li listen to me even if I try to stop you, so I won't be too firm with you. But please continue to be careful out there. Ah, by the way, Director Clavicle will be madder than a rampaging primate if he finds out, so let's keep this between us two. Talk to you later! Ah. Oh. Feels good! Um, what is that? Hold up. No, seriously, what is that? Have I actually ever been to this? Oh, yeah, okay, that's, uh, the, I know where that is. Never mind. That's where we ran into that, uh, that worm titan. The steel worm titan. Which I want to name after those, uh, those bullet trains in Japan. All right, so I think this, unless this raid reset, when the six star raid reset it, reset for some reason. Don't know why that is. Um, I'm pretty sure my time on my Switch is synced to the internet. Maybe I'll have to check and make sure that that's the case. I didn't actually change the settings on the Switch at all um, after I got it, but anyway. Um, Yeah, so this should be the five-star raid that was giving me trouble. Because the dude has Torment and... Nope. Nope. It changed. Okay. Well then. And uh, as you can see, there aren't gonna... There isn't gonna be any more six-star raids over here. Over here. So, uh, I don't really need to be doing anything right now. Um, tomorrow, if it becomes necessary, I'll go ahead and, uh, get a golden go. Let's move these, oops, these guys. Oh my goodness, my brain. These guys here. My iron hands will be all the way in box 32 with my other stuff. This row will be for our, uh, um, whatchamacallits, our, uh, um, raid battle dudes. And then what we'll do the rest of the stream is we're gonna head here. Here. Yeah. Oof. Boy. And we are going to go to the deepest level of area zero. Where would you like to go? Research station number four. Number four. Wonder if her skeleton is there. Professor Seda's skeleton? I should kind of give her a proper burial, I'm just saying. Um, 
And there it is. There's that Coridon. Yeah, it's Bear Coridon. He's got his posse with him. Really should have saved, actually, and turned off auto saves before I started this. But at the same time. Or a Calcum Pulse. I'm gonna. I am. I'm just gonna try a quick ball. I tried. We're just gonna use the mask ball here. Probably a waste. I'm probably gonna regret it later. But yeah. It seems to be the winged king mentioned in an old exp expedition journal. It was said to have split the land with its bare fists. Call it Scarlet. Okay. Oh, it has been sent to your boxes. Okay. Candy L. Hopefully there'll be a, a way to get more Master Balls. There usually is. It usually is tied in with that lottery system that I mentioned before. Where it'll look up how many Pokemon trainer IDs that you got. It'll, well, it'll, it'll test like a, um, a random number against all the Pokemon trainer IDs that you have and, and see if, uh, if, if that's the case then we're gonna get a lot. We're gonna have a lot of Master Balls. But, um, that would really only be in, uh, um, in DLC, I think. Anyway. <gasps> Ooh! What's this? What's this? What's this? Uh, whoopsies. Skipped right past that. Maybe I can check the recording. Maybe I can check the uh, the video later. So, so let's go ahead and check. No, that's not it. Back. Back. What? The camera app. The camera app. What? One of these is the Pokedex, right? Oh, no, okay, no, no, I know. Now I remember. Pokedex is select. Oh, my goodness. We're at 170. Okay, listen. Just hear me out. Instead of looking up the trade code... I can instead just scroll all the way to the end. Okay, so... So yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, use the trade code. Whoops. Um. Oh, that's right, we can't use it here. We can't use the Poké Portal here. So... Get out of here.
I saw what you sent me on Discord, Felianore. You know that's not that's not actually legal, right? It doesn't doesn't con it doesn't have any legal weight to it. I'm just saying. Zero, four, hundred, zero, three, nine, nine, and that should be for um, somebody with a Maridon looking for a Maridon. You're still going to jail. Oh. I think the person has Crydon. I think that person is Scarlet player. In this case, the the white background thing is is useful. I need Scarlet to Jimmy. Goodbye, Scarlet. used an Ultra Ball for his. Mm. So I think what I'm gonna do now is... Uh, Maridon's data has been added to the Pokedex. Much remains unknown about this creature. It resembles Cyclozar, but it is far more ruthless and powerful. Um, so I think actually what we're going to do here is we're going to take uh, some lessons. Uh, specifically, we are going to take history lessons. And that way we can unlock the, uh, the things. We can have, you mean Pokemon battles online? Yeah. Um. Link battle. Battle Stadium. I think Battle Stadium is the one. That... Take a history class. Oh, for students on the STEM track, humanities, general studies, maybe it's the humanities. Home ec room. I think you can make sandwiches there, maybe. School store. Oh, that's right. So these, you, you'll see, you see these? Um, so there's still actually a little bit of their storyline left to go for these, uh, for these characters. Of, of Pokemon? How do I, how do I take a class? We're doing some tests by helping each other study the subjects we're good at. I actually, I don't know how. 
I don't know how to take a class. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's general studies. Maybe here. Doesn't the son of some famous professor also come in this academy? I bet he's really smart. Well, he's good at cooking. Uh, maybe I need to go to the staff room. Speak with the history teacher. I heard that the student council president, Nimona, knows all the effects of every Pokemon move out there. That's pretty good. Pretty impressive. My Pachirisu lo really loves high places. Wow! Both Pokemon are huge! Where do I want to go? Um... I need to figure out how to how to take classes. Um, yeah, the uh, a lot of the teachers here are real colorful characters. I need to try harder to stand out. I know that she's the math teacher. The um, time I think her name is taking time out of your day to attempt to converse with me. You must be absolutely mad. Um, okay. Uh, can you? Are you a history teacher? Whoa, thanks for coming to say bonjour. Okay, apparently not. Hold on, let me go ahead and look this up. Blah, 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 come on. Starting in class, all you need to do is enter the school and make your way towards the information desk. Oh, okay. The entrance hall. Because yeah, why would you think that you would take a class by, you know, showing up to the classroom? Good morning, Master A. What class would you like to take? History. You'd like history with Ms. Rayford. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Hmm. Okay. Hey, it was that lady. Oh, I see we have some new students here with us today. My name is Ryford. I'll be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. History is a wonderful thing. Truly splendid. Lies of our ancestors throughout history forge the path to the present in which we live. Today, you shall learn about the most mysterious location in all of Paldea, the Great Crater. As you are all aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the heart of our region. The area inside this crater is called Area Zero, and research of its geological strata and material composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. I long believe that a certain something rests at the bottom of this mysterious crater. <laughs> Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Ray. Answer me this. What exactly was believed to rest in the depths of the Great Crater inside Area Zero? Treasure? A Snorlax? A Pokemon Center? <laughs> yeah, it was a Pokemon Center, of course. That's a treasure. <laughs> that is correct. You are a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? So you did your homework prior to coming to my class. I mean, that was not a difficult multiple-choice question. That's right. Some believe that a treasure more valuable than anything else in this world rests in the depths of the Great Crater. So much for, so much for dreams of treasure hunting, though, as the lab has been built in those very same depths. Oh, and before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Crater and Area Zero are both off-limits to all but those who will have official business there. 
not dare ent entertain the foolish notion of gallivanting off to gallivanting off to Area Zero in search of riches. This is no place for children dreaming of treasure and adventure. Besides, if it were at all possible to investigate the area, I would surely be the first to do so. Well, is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. That, that's how you pay attention, is because then you're not distracted by other things. Good morning, Master Ray. What class would you like to take? You'd like history with Ms. Ryford? Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Whoa. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under the rule of the Paldean Empire. Historical accounts describe the Paldean Emperor as being quite the dictator. The Emperor also zealously believed the legend of the treasure that rests deep within Area Zero. I must mention that the civilizations of our ancestors were not as developed as ours is today. People back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends, magic, and beings beyond human comprehension. Not gonna comment. Not gonna comment. In an attempt to gain the power to stand against Paldea's neighboring countries, the Emperor sent people to, in droves to join the hunt for the fabled treasure of Area Zero. Aha! Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Ray. Answer me this. Approximately how many years ago was it that the Paldean Empire began to rule this region? About 1,000 years ago? 2,000? 3,000? Uh, 1,000? Incorrect. You're off by an entire millennium. Why 1,000 years ago, the Paldean Empire had already begun to collapse. The answer is about 2,000 years ago. That is when the great era of exploration began. However, it is said that not a single adventurer sent out by the Empire ever reached the depths of Area Zero. Was it the punishing journey itself that barred their way? Or perhaps some unknown creature? The resounding failure of this great era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air of mystery surrounding the crater. Oh, what I wouldn't give to explore Area Zero in its untouched state at that time. What, what is she doing? Uh, what, what is she doing? There at the bottom? You know what? Never mind, we don't need to know. I suppose I can only hope for the swift invention of a time machine. Oh, is that the time already? You must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of the history's enigmas together next time. Well, clearly you have to learn Korean. Good morning, Master Ray. What class would you like to take today? Would you like history with Ms. Ryford? Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. <laughs> Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, and not a single soul was able to venture all the way into the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paldean Empire fell into decline. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. Ah yes, this very academy where we're now filling our young, your young minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. In fact, this school building, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built so long ago. This very structure is a piece of, his of history. Ah. 
Things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer it not to have the Pokeball portion, though. A relatively new addition. Ah, perfect timing to make eye contact, young Ray. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me, approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? 800 years ago. Correct? I see the look of concentration on your face was indeed just that. I mean, at least this question was aligned with with the actual lecture. You know, was actually, the, the answer was contained in the lecture. I mean, nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. The academy was constructed exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. At the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities and a unique, innovative growth. As such, people used to say, those seeking knowledge need look no further than the oranges of Pal- That's right, they were referring to Naranya Academy. It is said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside of the Paldea region. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. Since today's lesson, our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Anytime. You. Good morning, Master Ray. What class would you like to take? Stream it. You'd like history with Ms. Ryford? Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Greetings, my little students. It is time for our midterm exam. Emanation. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your mind and answer the questions. What is the name of the geological formation in the center of the Paldea region? Crater of Paldea. What was long to ble believe to rest in the depths of the A mysterious Pokemon, a school treasure. Years ago, the Paldean Empire began its rule. Many years ago was this academy built, 805 years ago. Those seeking blank, you look. Knowledge, knowledge is a problem. Your time is up. Put your writing utensils down. That last question was a freebie. You and the least capable of you surely padded your score there. Sincerely hope you did, anyway. So ends our midterm examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. 100%! Five question midterm. Okay. Education is, uh, um, not, not the greatest in the Pokemon universe, but, okay. Feels great to get that a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's have a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exam, and four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your history test. You answered five out of five questions correctly. That's a passing score. Congratulations. Ms. Rifle asked us to give this reward to any students who pass the exam. Wow. Keep doing your best. I don't get a bonus for getting a perfect score. Good morning, Master Ray. What class would you like to take? You'd like history with Ms. Ryfort? Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it's now a part of history. I was hoping to continue unraveling the marvels that history has presented to us today. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldea for generations. Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. The four treasures were as follows. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four of the treasures for himself. Aha! 
Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Ray. Answer me this. I said that one of the treasures was a set of tablets. What do you think these tablets were? Wooden planks for writing on? Handheld electronic devices. Medicine that you chew! <sighs> uh, wow. Also, I thought we were doing stuff for fun today. Correct. Your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. These particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East in ancient times. Not stone. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper became more universally available. For the king to consider these paper substitutes treasures, they must have been of superb quality. That, perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. So, if the king obtained these four treasures on that very night. It is said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Oh, is it that time already? I wasn't done with my story, but alas, so ends today's lesson. If you're interested in how the story ends, you may come see me outside class hours. Okay, and now we can go ahead and see her in the staff room, and she should give us the location, uh, locations of the, the, the doors, the gates. Where do you want to go? Be stuck. Ah, yes, Ray from Class 1A. The way you conduct yourself in my class and the answers you give to my questions, I admit they pique my interest. You're quite the interesting pupil, I must say. Tell me, Ray, given a choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things that are new? For older things. Ah, uh, so you prefer the things of the past, do you? The potential I saw in you is real after all. This one may indeed be of good use to me someday. What? What now? <laughs> ah, you can disregard that. I was simply thinking, of yeah, see, this is why I shouldn't be disregarding that. I enjoyed our little conversation today. You have my thanks, Ray. You became slightly closer with Ms. Ryford. Uh, okay. You're quite the interesting pupil, Ray. Uh, okay. I guess... I guess no. That's not... Which one? That... No, you... I mean, the one that was... What, Jane? What do you mean, the one that was working? Perfectly. Or at least somewhat perfectly. Okay, so where is she? It said she was here. Oh my gosh, why? Graphics. This, this. Oh, no. I wanna stay here. I wanna find. I wanna find the history teacher. The draw distance, though. The draw distance. What is this? Oh, culture. A culture. What? Yeah. An article caught your eye. Enigmas of Ped Paldea, file number 10. Scream tail, a billion-year-old Jigglypuff? Somewhere in the Paldean forest, it said, lurks Scream tail. A being with Jigglypuff's own endearing puffball appearance, but also a ferocious aggression that leads it to attack anyone who comes near. Its primitive appearance and savage nature have prompted rumors that it could be a Jigglypuff from one billion years ago. It's named after a creature in the Scarlet Book that is described as having a distinctive tail and scream. Um... So we were told that she was in the entrance hall, but, uh... Not seeing her. Yeah. 
Here's our history teacher. For that matter, we were told that, uh, what's her face was here too? Well, here's our history teacher. Um, but yeah, Penny was, oh, there's Penny, okay. My visitant Ray from class 1A. Are you perhaps interested in the rest of the, of the old tale I told you in class? It is convenient that you would take the bait I presented in class. A vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Because these four treasures were actually four Pokemon. As these Pokemon were passed from human hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at that time, they awakened as disasters and began, rampage, and began to rampage out of control. The king called for renowned Pokemon wielders to defend the country, and, after a fierce battle, these incarnations of disaster were quelled. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea. So what do you think? Would you say the story is just make-believe? No. Very astute of you. I've read many historical disaster reports, personal journals, and the like. There is much to support the truth of this story. If I am able to prove the story's veracity myself, I will be sure to let you know. I came even closer with Ms. Ryfort. Uh, but that doesn't, it doesn't seem like that would add it to the map. Yeah, so those aren't added to the map just yet. Um, so I guess we'll take another history class? Good afternoon, Master Ray. What class would you like to take? You'd like history with Ms. Ryfort. Yes. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Hey, I, I, I've been assured that I was tested and I am not. Oh, wait, you were talking about being late. Okay. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. I trust that you all remember our lesson before the midterm exam concerning remember our lesson uh, concerning the great crater Paldea and its interior, Area Zero. This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldean Emperor. Two hundred years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Paldea's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of team members was the name of a man who was the, an author and brilliant natural historian, Heath. After returning from, expedition, from the expedition to Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. Aha! Perfect timing to make eye contact, young Ray. Let's see if you were paying attention. What was the name of the team that first made it to the greatest, the deepest reaches of Great Crater? Area Zero Adventures, Area Zero Survey Corps, Area Zero Expedition. Correct? To pip a cup on and remember a term I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. You really are quite the clever one. The correct name for this team was the Area Zero Expedition. The record of their activities written by the expedition member Heath can be found in bookstores and the like even today. This record is now known as the Scarlet Book. At the time, the entire region of Paldea was absolutely buzzing about Area Zero. The Scarlet Book was so popular, practically everyone had a copy. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and illustrations of things that could never be thought of as real. The masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the truth of the expedition, making it into the bottom of the crater, was called into question. The Scarlet Book was condemned to the shelves of bo used bookstores as just another book of wild paranormal stories. There's a copy in one of the bookshelves on the ground floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a read if you're interested. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We'll unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Do, 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 do. 
let me make sure we're not supposed to be finding her outside of class. I mean, I know it didn't say it, but... Good evening, Master A. What class would you like to take? This should be the last history class, and then we'll have the final, and then maybe... Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today is our last class, so I'd like to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us one last time. In our last class, I taught you about the Area Zero expedition of 200 years ago, correct? Alas, 200 years is not that long ago. Not that long ago at all. How unfortunate that our history lessons must march so inex inexorably toward the future. Would it not be more of an adventure to march toward the past instead? To start from our present and study history in reverse? Uh, that might be hard to follow. Indeed, it may be difficult to understand the flow of events, how one thing leads to another, if we were to trace history in reverse. I suppose I have no choice but to let the flow of time carry us toward the future. In this last class of ours, I shall fill your minds with the history of the terrestrial phenomenon. The technology behind terror orbs has its origins in Area Zero. Even after the Area Zero expedition supposedly reached the crater's deepest depths, others continued to explore that area. And around 140 years ago, Pokemon cloaked in a mysterious light were discovered there. As you may have guessed, these were, in fact, terrestrialized Pokemon. However, when those who discovered these Pokemon brought them out of Area Zero, the light faded and the terrestrial phenomenon remained a mystery for quite some time. However, ten years ago, uh, that might as well be present day, certain someone you yeah, certain someone you've definitely heard of unraveled this mystery. Aha, perfect timing to make eye contact here today. Answer me this. What is the name of the pro famous professor who unraveled the terrestrial phenomenon mystery? You How should I know? Well, I do know. I do know, because it's pretty obvious, you know, because of the story, but still. Professor Heath, Professor Saint, Professor Clavicle. No. Correct. To think that you, are a new transfer to our academy, could correctly answer this question. You must be very diligent in your studies. Approximately ten years ago, a professor named Seda unraveled the mystery of the terrestrial, terrestrial phenomenon. She discovered that the shining crystal down in Area Zero, or rather, the energy that they emit, is what causes Pokemon to terrestrialize. This led the professor to invent terror orb technology and to develop a practical use for it. This technology was then shared with both the Pokemon League and our Academy. Rumor has it that the director Clavicle was one of the researchers on the professor's team. Alas, this story is much less exciting now that someone we all know appears in it. Modern history truly is dull, isn't it? Thus ends my history classes. Our next session will be our final exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Yeah, seriously. Good evening, Master Ray. What class would you like to take? History fine. You like history with Ms. Ryfort? Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Oh, goodness. Greetings, my little students. It's time for our final examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your mind, minds and answer the questions. What is the area within the Great Crater of Peldia called? Zero. Or area, crater area. How many years ago was this county founded? 805. Which of these did not appear in the Paldean fairy tale about four treasures? The folding fan. I was reading up to down. Which Area Zero expedition member wrote the records of the team's activities? Leith, Leith, Leith. How many years ago did Professor Seda invent terror orbs? Ten years ago. Your time is up. Put your writing utensils down. You must excuse that last question. It's too shallow and ridiculous to be on a history test. But alas, the director forced me to include it. So ends our final examination. May I ask for your scores at the school's front desk. Yeah. 
feels great to get the get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams, four questions correct to pass the final exams. See how you did on your history test. You answered five out of five questions correct. That's a passing score. Congratulations. It's a... I aced the test, thank you. Ms. Rifford asked me to give this reward to any students who pass the exam. Five EXP candies M. Mm. Keep doing your best. Uh, I was given to understand that there would be a reward in terms of location of certain things. Ray, the time has come. The cursed treasures, the four Pokemon of Ruin. They exist. And I stumbled upon the truth in the newspaper of all places. Ha! <laughs> in an interview piece with the carpenter, no less. Pokemon wielders apparently use sacred stakes to seal these treasures of ruin in shrines. There is a separate shrine for each of the four Pokemon, and eight stakes driven into the ground in the areas surrounding each shrine keep the power of ruin at bay. In other words, if all the stakes for a given shrine were to be removed, it would release the Pokemon held inside. Don't you think it would be nice to free those Pokemon from the confi confines of their tiny little shrines, Ray? They've probably been, you know, driven insane. Just saying. <laughs> A kind soul, I see. You're proving truly re useful. According to the descendants of the Pokemon wielders in the story, you must have a bond with Pokemon in order to remove the stakes. I'm sure someone as Pokemon savvy as yourself would have no trouble with at all with that. You can choose for yourself whether to believe me or not, and I'll mark the locations of these shrines on your map. Bruh. That looks like... Anyway. I'd rather go myself, of course, but skipping out on my classes to go adventuring seems to have made the director a little suspicious of me. <laughs> you can think of it as part of your treasure hunt. Treasures of ruin are still treasures, after all. I hope you will investigate these shrines if you are at all inclined to do so. You feel trusted by Ms. Ryfort. Okay, so we can see. Go up here. So you see how there's like no fast travel points around here? The closest ones are here and here. Which is uh, kind of sucks because, oh, look at this uh, terror raid den right there. But, um, and then there's also down here. There's this one, um, which is which is also pretty far from any other fast travel points, to be perfectly honest. Um, this one, again, pretty far from any other fast travel points. Not like extremely far, but still, you know, further than you would like. This one is actually fairly close to uh, to this. You can see this one, but um. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the locations of these things. Um, See if I can. Okay, there we go. This is the one I'm looking for. Um. Wait, what? I thought these were fast travel points. Oh. Maybe I have to have to leave. Get the heck out of here. First. We're actually just gonna go there real quick, so we can see. Looks like in person. Okay. 
I think it should have some of the chains removed. Uh, from how many ominous stakes that we pulled out. But I could be wrong about that. Regardless, I'm going to hope that we fight it at night because then we can use Dusk Balls instead of Ultra Balls. So because we've removed half of the stakes, then half of the chains are gone. So, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and try and get it here. There's apparently a fast travel spot somewhere around there. Um... Let's see. Colonnade Hollow. Hello there. I'm a Pokemon League rep. Been having some nice Pokemon battles? So far, you've defeated four trainers here in. Oh. That's why. Weird. Why are they there instead of... Like, why don't they have... I'm so confused. Why don't they have Pokeballs? Why, like, why did... Why is there a spot to keep your Cyclozar instead of just, like, you put them in a Pokeball? Doesn't make any sense. What the heck? There's just items all over the place here. I haven't been up here yet. Oh, Murkrow. Oh, you poor, unfortunate Murkrow. You won't die. In a fire. Poor unfortunate soul. Mm, kiwi? Yeah. Kiwis are kind of tasty, but uh, New Zealand gets really pissed at you if you eat too many of them. They say they're in danger and all this kind of stuff. It tastes a lot better than chicken, I'll tell you that. Mm, nothing, just some grass. So, something about a colonnade. Well, regardless. Oh, that's a. Goodness. That's one of them types. What are you? Oh, youngest. Oh, this is one of the wonders of Paldea, right? Something like that. And this is a watchtower that I have not yet unlocked, looks like. Which is, uh, pretty rare at this point. I'm looking all over for watchtowers that I have yet to unlock, and, well, here's one. We're going to go ahead and climb to the top and see if we can't uh, catch ourselves a gimme ghoul. Or knock it out, depending on what level it is. Uh, 
team for Hurricane. I know how I feel about that. Oh! Level 50, that's the one I want. Get in the quick ball. Get in the ball, Nebby. I feel like that's gonna knock it out if I if I hit it with psychic. I think maybe bulldoze would probably be the one that would be the least likely to knock it out, and I can also yawn it. Well, that's what I should have done with the brute bonnet. Cause I should have yawned it with le chunk. moves can't affect normal Pokemon. Bulldoze actually works really well with a slow Pokemon with Quick Claw, doesn't it? Oh, dang. I, I gotta catch it in a Luxury Ball. I gotta try at least. Pokemon. Come on. This guy's begging to be caught in a luxury ball. Critical capture, please! Yes! Yes! So now we have one, and we will call him our golden boy. Where will you see the evolution? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show it this stream because that would be way too much farming um, on top of what we're already doing, but uh... What is that, actually? Wait, that's... That's an ominous state. What? Okay. Yes. When you pulled out the stake, it crumbled and vanished. Okay. And then apparently there's one inside here, too. Which, actually, this should be a fast travel point. Maybe not. Hmm. Maybe it's just uh, the tower. Over here instead. Okay. Oh dang. The lights starting to come out. <laughs> Just stand on the stake, sure. Pull out the stake. When you pulled out the stake, it crumbled and vanished. Dragon Pulse! Hey, nice! Okay. 
So that's this one. Just one second. That's about where? Okay, and then that's the one that I just pulled out. Um, I think I've already pulled out all of these. And then... Um, that one might, I might have also pulled out. Let me see. So it should be here? No? Here. Yeah. Um, that one I'm pretty sure I already pulled out. Oh my gosh. How far we're gonna have to go. Um, but I'm gonna check just to be on the safe side. Just so you're clear, there's three more, um, just so we're clear, I mean, remember there were four treasures, so this is just gonna be the first of them, it's, we're gonna end the stream after we catch it, but, yeah, it's, um, um, but we're gonna catch the other ones the next stream. I'm sure I pulled out this one. Yeah, it would have been somewhere around here. But, uh... It's gone now. Alright. Alright, so... Next up, it should be... Uh, right over here, it looks like. Uh, maybe we should go for this one first. Yeah. No, maybe not. Hello, Mr. Gimme Ghoul. One coin. I should have killed you where you stood. What's these guys in the one coins? How rude. I was thinking it would be nice to try and catch it in a dusk ball because that would make it easier. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go for a luxury ball for this guy. It should be somewhere over here. Here's a spirit tomb.
this one into a quick ball. Switch over to Le Chonk and yawn it and put it in a dust ball. That's fine. It just gets your HP low enough that uh, this is almost guaranteed. Just in case it doesn't work, I can always. To imagine there's someone that tried to make a curse set with a um, with a ghost Pokemon and just completely forgot that it has a different effect if it, if a ghost Pokemon uses it. Wait, don't tell. What the flip? It absolutely should not be able to do that. I know I didn't get this one. At least I'm pretty sure I didn't. Come on, let me see. Let me make sure. Okay, so it should be in the north end. Oh, it's one of those hidden ones, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very difficult to see from up top. Pull out the stake? Who wouldn't? That's a reference. Alright, there's one more. Go ahead and... Actually, yeah, this is probably the closest. Alright, so I'm gonna get a lot more Luxury Balls. Because they're... They're just Pokeballs, really. And, um... I'm gonna be kind of screwed for this for a while. Um, that's fine. You're up so late, Champion Ray. You here to let your weary Pokemon rest? Then we'll need your Pokemon for a few seconds. Armor Rouge and the rest of your team should be all better now. Come back and see us again whenever you need. Welcome to the Pokemon. Can I help you with something? I would like to buy as many Luxury Balls as I can afford. Okay, I'll do 100. Here you are. Thank you for shopping with us. I have 10 Premier Balls in the house. Anything else I can do for you? Do come again. And then this should be the last one. Well, I guess we won't be picking up that item. I 
don't think I'll actually be able to use full swipe on these guys. Um, because they are... I'm pretty sure they are ghost Pokemon. There are ways to be able to use full swipe on ghost Pokemon, but... Um, yeah, it's not really worth it. And I don't think that... Uh, um, So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off autosaves. Um, going to put Highlander away. And pull out Sleeper. And I'm also going to feed Sleeper a whole bunch of EXP candy. That way, there shouldn't be any issues. I'm gonna go ahead and do a hundred of these M's and see if that's. And I should be able to feed them all of them and not, and not be an issue. Well, and then options, turn off autosave. And then pull it out. Just ominous black stake driven into the ground. Will you pull out the stake? Yes. When you pulled out the stake, it crumbled and vanished. You hear a mysterious cry coming from the shrine. It's free. It's free. Oh, I can fly here. What the heck? Okay. I just couldn't fly there from... There it is. I'm pretty sure these are all ghost type. They might be all dark type. Faint sound is coming from within the shrine. Will you touch the shrine? Yes. Bang. That's the vessel. Vessel of Ruin, weaken the special attack of surrounding Pokemon, okay? I honestly expect that this is Grass Ghost. Ooh, that was, that was perfect, actually. Luxury ball all the way, even though I could use a Dusk Ball. I'm just hoping for a critical capture on the Luxury Ball. Very expensive, but I'll do it. Great chop. Not very effective. Oh no. Yeah, that's not the best ability to have for someone that, you know, you're trying to get make it so that they'll put them to sleep, but at least Paralysis lasts forever. I gotta see what Breloom's other ability is. So 
Effect Spore or Poison Heal. Or Technician. So, actually, Technician would be really good with False Swipe. So, actually, <laughs> strangely enough, I think I might be using an Ability Patch on, uh, on my Breloom. Now the Dusk Balls would not be of any use. seem to do a whole lot. I don't know, calling it Ruination kind of expected something more. That's fine, that's fine. Yes, friendship powers. I'm pretty sure these Pokemon are shiny locked, by the way. And the uh, the other Coridon slash Maridon are shiny locked. Is shiny locked as well. So it's not really any use shiny hunting them. Stomping tantrum. Is this ghost fighting? Or ghost ground? No, it wasn't. Seed bomb wasn't super effective, was it? Oh, for some reason I was thinking throat chop was a fighting type move. My brain. Oh, maybe it's dark. Dark and. Maybe Ghost Dark? Done! Dark and ground. So yeah, no, they're, they're dark, not ghost. Oh, I should have used false swipe. The fear poured into an ancient ritual vessel has clad itself in rocks and dirt to become a Pokemon. Vessel. Vessel has been sent to your boxes. Alright. 
So yeah, those, uh... So there are three more of those. Um... I've pulled out a few ominous stakes from the ground. Um... But not nearly as many as I pulled out in the northwest area. So... Yeah, um... We're not gonna be doing any more. Oh, okay. So it's only after you beat them. Or only after you pull out all the ominous stakes that they become places that you can fly to. Um... Oh, that's right! I didn't save yet! <laughs> Let's do that, shall we? First of all, turn on autosaves. Yes. And save. Okay, and then I'm gonna heal, and then I'm gonna save again, and then we're gonna head out. Morning, Champion Ray. Here to let your precious Pokémon rest. Then we'll need your Pokémon for a few seconds. Uh, you know what? Actually, no. You know what? I'm gonna find one more. I'm gonna find one more uh, um, uh, raid. We're gonna do one five-star raid. Okay. Using our big tanky boy. Come back and see us again whenever you need. It might take a while for us to find a five-star raid, though, but we'll do it. We'll we'll do one more five-star raid. So, so I can show you just how much better he is at doing those than these others. These others that I've been using. Uh, dang. Uh, okay, so we'll go from here. We'll go to the ground one, we'll, and then and loop around basically. I think there is one of them, one of the four that is Dark and Ghost. Is it Chenpo? Maybe. Six spikes. Means that its only weakness is Fairy. I think, I think its weakness is Fairy. No, I I'm pretty sure. Phantom Force. Really? That's a TM move now? Alright. If this is a five-star raid, I think I'm just gonna go straight from Belly Drum to... Yeah. So I'm just gonna go straight from Belly Drum to, uh, um... Hey! King Lu. How about that? Um... I should check what Ruination does, but not right now. Uh, I'm gonna go straight from Belly Drum to Thunder Punch. So, um, you're gonna see just how much we destroy this. So, with Miel Scarada, with a choice band, it was like, it was like, oh, battle, fight to the end, all this kind of stuff. But with Belly Drum, um, Iron Hands, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, uh, well, it's gonna be rough for this guy. <sighs> Not 
particularly powerful. As you can see. <laughs> okay. And that almost took it to zero in a single shot. In a single hit. How ridiculous. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. We can't even terrestrialize because we 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 brought it down so far so fast. Like at this point there's really it it doesn't matter. We're even getting heals. Will o Wisp? Doesn't matter. We could die, and it would be alright. Feel like I could die, and that would be alright. Alright. I want something else. To get me through this life, baby, I want something else. I'm listening when you say goodbye. So, yeah, we just we take the faint. Because it doesn't matter. Don't even need to worry about it. And then we just terrestrialize and thunder punch. We don't even need to belly drum at this point. But even if it wasn't super effective, you know, like even if we were just using drain punch, you can see that it's pretty darn strong. It would be three shot, uh, instead of two shot material. And we ain't even gonna catch it. And there we go. Herba Mystica, Bottle Cap, lots of EXP candy, Terra Shards, Health Feathers, and some, some stuff that we can sell to keep you up. So, yeah. Um, Meowskarata probably wouldn't have struggled with that because it is it was a water type one. It was a water, it was water type Terra Raid Den, but... You can tell just how absolutely wrecked that dude was. All right. So, let's see. Oh, that's right. Okay. I'm going to save once again, even though I know it auto saved. It's fine. And, uh,. Trying to remember where the emotes are. So, that's going to be everything. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the rest of your night is a good one. And I will see you later. Heart hands!